Hey guys, welcome to my live Real Talk with your girl, Lady D, unapologetic and non-biased. Right here, I have some breaking news where it says that a man, yes, a man has set himself on fire, they say in protest outside of the Trump trial. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this right here, which CNN is going to give us an update in an hour. So all this right here is alleged, but we do have some pictures, some footage. I'm going to see if I can show a little bit, you know, without, you know, being within the copyright uh, standards. So let me see, go ahead and uh, read this right here. Copyright disclaimer is under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education and research fair use is used permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing yes this right here guys is something that you know you just can't make it up a, a man had set himself on fire they saying you know he was a protester so let me see if i can go ahead and drop the link and see if one of my mods want to come up, Starbucks lover. She says, welcome, everybody. Uh, everything is alleged. OK, so I do have some clips and I want to go ahead and show that. But let me go ahead and drop the link right quick. Thank you very much, uh, Star. So let me drop the link in case uh, she want to come up. So, we, yeah, we're going to go ahead and talk about this right here. I see on the time uh, news, which I had got my reporting all for CNN. Yes, a man has set himself on fire. Yes, on fire, guys. Yes, right in front of the courthouse. So let me go ahead and read this article right uh, quick. Uh, let me see if I can go ahead and pull it up. Let me see if I, see, I know I had pulled one up, but this one is, let me see if this one going to go ahead and let me up. I'm going to go ahead and do this one right here. Yes, guys, again, welcome, welcome to Real Talk with your girl, Lady D, unapologetic and nine buys. So we're going to go and read this article right here. I'm going to read this one. I think this is coming from, uh, let me see where this article coming from. So let me go ahead and see if I can share this with you guys, and then we can go ahead and talk about it, okay? I see uh, Starbucks is in the house. Hi, Star, how are you doing? Starbucks. Sorry, I was on mute. I'm well. How are you? Yes. I, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm recovering. You know, I, I didn't supposed to come live until tomorrow. But when I saw this breaking news, I say, look, I need to get on it because this right here, man, this is a lot saying a man. I don't know if he's a protester or not. I'm gonna go ahead and read the article, you know, because CNN, you know, going to give us an update, you know, I guess once they get all the details, so all this right here is a ledge. But uh, what are your thoughts about some of the stuff that is going on? What we do here? Wow, it's it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We have no idea why this man set himself on fire, right? At all. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's a sympathizer. Maybe he's just. Mm -hmm uh just lost you know lost his way in life and just wanted to to you know to do harm to himself maybe just oh, you, you victim. know they are very passionate you know people are very passionate i don't know maybe don't, wanted his 15 I don't minutes know, but of i know fame. people are very passionate I, I yeah, but I, I want to know, uh, is he, you know, unalive? Because I didn't hear that he was un unalive, but I, I do have some of the footage where they uh, were trying to go ahead and put out the fire. Now, they didn't say if he was unalive or not. So I don't know within a few uh, minutes, uh, CNN going to go ahead and report it. So did you hear anything else? I didn't hear that he was on a live. No, I, 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 I heard there was movement. He was moving around and mm -hmm. that the response was quick. They came, the, um, I guess the police officers who were on the scene put, you know, put him out. But wow. Oh, wow. Like I say, this right here, this is scary, you know, because this is exactly what you're going to see. And I'm truly, I truly believe that, that this is not going to 
be the first. You're going to see many more, especially act up because you know how they are very passionate when it comes to uh, Trump. Yes, yes, I know they are. And I just, you know what? I just don't get it. I don't get it. What is the passion that they have for this for this man? Mm -hmm. I do not, I don't get it. Well, you know, he came out with Make America Great Again. And, well, he came out, you know, with the saying, Make America Great Again. And they live by it, you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, they are very loyal supporters and he know that he have very loyal supporters. So they going to believe everything that he said. So this is, well, you know, to me, you know, this is very scary. You know, just think about, you know, what had happened. You remember when they overthrow uh, the Capitol and just imagine, you know, what would happen if he go to trial and, you know, he's convicted, you know? Yes, yes. Well, he, he's, you know, people can't be upset with the system. You know, it's it, it, no one is above the law. If you break the law, whether you're an ex-president, an uh, ex-superstar, an ex-NBA player, you know, you, you have to pay the price. That's just how it is. And people shouldn't be so invested in in another individual. Like he's a savior. He's not a savior. He's there only to save mm -hmm. himself. Absolutely. But see, they don't see up, that. No, when people wake up and see that, they're going to, you know, maybe they'll never wake up and realize that that individual number 46 is out for himself. But, you mm -hmm. know, they'll see. They'll see. They will see. Well, let's go to read this. Let's read this report right here. This is by New York Post. It said, man set himself on fire outside Trump's hush money trial in New York City. And also it says that a man has set himself on fire outside the Manhattan criminal court Friday afternoon as former President Donald Trump hush money trial was underway, law enforcement sources told the Pulse. Uh, the shocking incident unfolded in a barricade park just across the street from the 100 Central Street courthouse around 1.30 p.m., just as the jury was finalized in the historical case. So do they have the entire jury, every, you know, they have them in set? Because I know some of them was very questionable. I think they do. They have 12 plus the alternate. I think they picked the last alternate today. Okay, so they have their trial in set now. Yes, I think it begins on Monday. Okay, so like I said, a lot of this right here is a, a, a distraction. And uh, I'm pretty sure the same military force that they went in P. Diddy's home, they might have to have it outside of that courthouse because this right here, it, it is very serious, you know? So I don't think just uh, NYPD, you know, is going to be out there. They're going to have to have every boots on ground when it comes to stuff like this. And they also, they're going to have to vet the ones that, you know, they get to uh, secure this because you remember uh, last time they were saying that some of the people that they were sending even was in the military. And I'm going to say allegedly, you know, that someone was very questionable, but that they had to pull them out. So, you know, like I said, the world is on a standstill. You know, everybody's watching, you know, because this right here, this is not something that, you know, we hear all the time. The president, the former president of the United States is on trial. Well, you, I mean, like I said, no one is above the law. And if you commit a crime, whatever the crime might look to these people, I don't know. I'm not here to judge him. And mm -hmm. nor, no, nor do I care about you know, anything about him, no Biden either. So I'm not that invested, you know? Yes. So, um, yeah, he's just, it is what it is. He has to go through it like everybody else, like every citizen that breaks the law. Yes. Hey, Bertha, how are you doing? She said, hey, Lady D in chat. Kane State got an errand to run. See uh, hey. it on the replay blessing. Okay, thank you for coming in. Thank yes. So, yeah, so, I um, mean, you know, it is what it is. His supporter can't be upset. I mean, because if it was anybody else, they, would, they, would they be rolling with him so hard? You know what I mean? It's, I, I just don't get it. Um, well, this this is not anybody else. You know, this is the former president of the United States. And 
a lot of people, you know, they believe his rhetoric. You know, they believe all the stuff that, you know, he went ahead and he put out and they wants to see him, you know, they wants to see him, you know, get into the seat once again. So. As he should, if that's how they feel, if they're going to vote for him and push him, you know, along the finish line, then he should. He should be, you know, president again. But what a loser. He loses one election and then, oh, my God, he, he mm -hmm. just didn't do it, you know, four years, four years. Just it's crazy. Everything mm -hmm. about that man is unprecedented. Even his Absolutely. own is not even <laughs> supportive of him, really. But do you think that they should have had more security out there, you know, than what we see right here? Because just to say it could have been worse than what it is right here. No, they're, I'm listening to it now. They're saying, no, no one was in danger. Well, they had security where it mattered, inside the courtroom, you know, inside, outside the courthouse, because, you know, they have secret service. So they're saying, no, no one else was, was in danger. As of yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. As no, of yet. No so one, let me, go, no go ahead. Harm, no one else. Because as I see it, I think Laura Coates, one of the um, one of the CNN contributors, she was, she seemed like she was right there, like she had front seat to it, and she can smell. She says she smelled um, the flames and she smelled flesh. She was saying, and she seemed unharmed. So I don't know. I see my girls in the house, country girl, Queena. She said, happy Friday. Happy Friday, country hey, girl. Thank you for coming up. in. Happy Friday. <laughs> yes, yes. She says, welcome. Yes, welcome. Yeah, but like I said, you know, I think that every last person, even when it comes to the prosecutors, I think that they should have uh, security all around them because this right here, it's not like some joke around the street, you know, this right here is very serious. And we already know where these people mindset, you know, or when it comes to uh, the former president, uh, Donald Trump. And he's crazy anyway, you know, he probably <laughs> saying all these lies and all these things over and over again. You know, he has, there are people that are really, really mentally disturbed that would do anything, mm -hmm. you know, they would drive anywhere like yeah that's why they were they don't they don't want to give him the names of the juror because they'll know that he he will put it on social media and these people will be targeted so he's he's really nuts this guy's nuts i would i would be really scared you know especially when it comes to the jurors because you don't know who inside you know will leak that type of information because like i said you know when it comes to uh, Donald Trump and you know his saying make America great again these people think that they are going back to what I call the wild wild west so quite obvious they think that they can sit there and get things back on track you know of what Donald Trump's vision then you don't know what could you know could happen you know who can leak any information you know I, like I said there and say these uh jurors and the prosecutors I think that, you know, it should have, you know, more security than that. I'm sure Eric Adams is going to add more people now. If they were playing around and cutting corners now mm -hmm. because of this, this for sure, it's going to make them even more, more alert, you know? Yes. I wouldn't have civi uh, civilians, you know, like 50, <laughs> maybe about, a mile away from the courthouse, they have to be bar barricaded way back. They couldn't even get so close to that courthouse. You know, I would just have, you know, security all around there because this right here, this is, this is scary. And I, I truly believe, I hope not, but it looked like this is just the beginning. Okay. So let me go ahead and read a little more. It's saying disturbing, disturbing footage showed him in a seated position while completely engulfed in flame. This is uh, back in body twitching on the ground as people rushed over with fire extinguished. I, I just want to know, you know, what could be on these people's mind to do something like that? It's saying the disturbing scene unfold in a barricaded park across the street from the courthouse. So that was across from the courthouse. So you can see right here, you can see the cops right here 
also uh it said as someone set themselves on fire one cop was overheard saying at the scene about 20 minutes later as ashes smothered on the ground in the aftermath wow that's deep that's deep and also it says right here he has been seated sitting on a bench inside the park when he suddenly threw uh his belongings on the ground and droused himself in something uh before going up in flames according to sources flyers left at the scene uh linked at linked to a substack page with the head and i have set myself on fire outside the uh the trump trial so he already look he had flyers right here it says the true history of the world and it said haunted haunted uh carnival edition I, I can't read the rest. It says, we know our, you, can you see this right here? We know our, can you see this right here? Hold on one second. I should have, uh, what are my readers? I should have blown all that up. Mm -hmm. No, it I says, can't. We know our, uh, this mm -hmm. farming uh, campaign is completed when everything the American public believe is false. CIA uh, I know I see CIA uh, and something like that he got. But, you know, like I say, these people, you know, they are very, in, you know, they are very insane when it comes to stuff like this. Very insane, you know. And I, I, I just truly believe that they need more coverage than what they have right here. So what's your thoughts about that store when it comes to the security? Are you there? So I think that uh, s something must be wrong with Star Mike. Star, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. So what do you, what's your thoughts about it? And everything is alleged when it comes to uh, the security. Do you think that they should go ahead and heighten up the security? Absolutely. 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 It says something about the history of the world. I don't know what that means. Yes. Well, if he wants to talk about the history of America, it's not a good history. I mean, you know, so yeah, yeah it's not really a good. So I'm not sure what this pamphlet is about. The world well, of just America. So <laughs> This is what my opinion said. He means make America white again. So these people, they really think that they can change back the time. And that's why I always tell my people, you know, they think that when I come on here, I be preaching, you know, I be telling them when it comes to all this entertainment stuff, these reality shows, all that right there is only a distraction. While these people are working overtime on us, these people think that they can change back the time and that they can sit there and relive what their forefathers have done. Because this right here, you know, you can see that this is a race, a racial tendency. You know, what's your thoughts about that, Star? Well, I feel that America has always been great. And, you know, you did. You did. Yeah, not for In what everyone. way, America? What in what way do you think that America have always been great? Well, for some, not for all. If you are brown skin, <laughs> of course it wasn't great. It wasn't kind to you. But I'm just saying to to that, you know, to some people, to some groups of people, they want to make it back who how it used to be in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. It was really great for them. I totally, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. But I, I'm here to tell you guys that'll never happen again, you know. So they might as well have just stop, you know, believing all them hocus pocus stories because it would never ever happen again. And that's real talk. But uh, when it comes they're trying, to, uh, they're trying with the, they're trying with the votes. They're trying mm -hmm. with the women's reproduction rights. They're starting, you know, little by little, little by little. And reproduction, mm -hmm. you know, who who does that affect? Black and brown, right? Absolutely. So you you absolutely right. They can change back little and, by and, little, little. Yes, yes, yes. It's chipping, scary. They're chipping, chipping to see how far they can get away with what their agenda is. They're chipping. They're chipping at it. Absolutely. And they have a way. They have a way to go and 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 put it back to what 
they thought, you know, was the original plan. And with the uh, the prison system, you know, that's another modern day slavery, you know, uh, as many as they can incarcerate it because, look, they rather build up prisons than build up hospitals, you know, mental institutions, you know. So we already know when it comes to the system, the system is not messed up. The system is only doing what the system is designed to do. It sure is. It's all a distraction, like you said. You know, we have two wars going on, right? And 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 the disrespect that right now it's going with our president, our current president. There's one individual, one prime minister that has no respect for 47, or what is it, 46. So it, this is all a distraction, wars and bombs and it's to yeah to distract us from the real issue of what's going on here in america and really they targeting again like i said they're targeting black and brown because you know we have to face it some black and brown people don't have the same money like um the caucasians do you know like mm -hmm. let's start with the women a Caucasian woman can get on a bus, get in her car and go get, you know, an abortion in another state. And, and, and brown people can't do that. Brown women can't do that. Black mm -hmm. and brown women can't afford to get on a bus, on a train, in their own cars to go to another state and, you know, get stay at a hotel and get that procedure done. So they're forced to have these children and that's how it becomes, you know, more poverty. You know, they only care what's in the wound. After it comes out, you're black and brown. You don't stand a chance. They don't care. And that's the, and, and and don't you know? Uh, I agree of what you're saying to uh, you know certain things, but I also you know I'm 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 at a point right now is that it's no more excuses, especially when it comes to our people, because we have black billionaires. We are very educated. We are very smart. We got woke people, you know, knowing who they are, you know, and and knowing that a lot of stuff out there, you know, we bit off a, a whitewash lie. So, you know, we got money. But the thing about it is that we're not good stewards when it comes to our money, you know, soon in a minute, you know, we get our paycheck, what we do, we go and pour it back into the system. So now it is the time for us to sit there and say, look, the buck stop here. Enough is enough. You know, we already know what had happened to our ancestors and our forefathers. Are we going to allow this right here to happen in the 21st century? You know, so it's time for us to sit there and, and shake ourselves out of these grave clothes. You know, we got the money. We got the resources. We got very intelligent people. But we got to sit there and start pouring into our own community. We got to leave these people stuff alone because, like I say, it all belongs to us anyway. We are the lifeline to everything that exists. But the thing about it is that we keep dibbing and dabbing in the things of the world, which I think that's why we might. And I pray that it don't. But sometimes, you know, like I say, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and some things you got to take it by force. I think that we are heading in a civil war. Yeah, we are. We are. And it's scary. I, and I believe that also financial education should begin at home. You know, when mm -hmm. your child gets birthday money, instead of just letting that child go and buy whatever they want, you know, use up the entire amount. Just they know you're going to save half and you can use the other half. We're going to put this in the bank. We're going to buy a stock or two. It begins at home. It begins at home. Absolutely. And That's then the key schools word. don't teach them either about financial. They don't teach any of that. They teach everything else. History. If your child goes to Catholic school, they'll teach about the, uh, you know, about the Bible. Math that they can't even use in real life. You know, like this hard math that they're doing now. 
uh, social studies, English, you know, they don't teach about financial stability. They really don't. And they should have that in, I would say they should have that in middle school, high school and college. And that's where, like I said, I blame our people as well, because you can't expect the same ones that oppress and suppress your people to teach you. You can't expect that. That's why we need to start building schools right into our own community. And, and I talk about it all the time. Not only schools, we need trade schools. You know, we want to take our kids and, and, and shove them in college, you know, and nothing is wrong with college. You know, if you brighten and, and you are doing good and, you know, your grades are up poor, yes, go to college. But we also need trade schools. We need to start coming together. And when I say we, I am talking about my black community and start building up trade schools, start teaching kids how to be carpenters nothing wrong with carpentry you would never go out of business being a carpenter a, a plumber you know being you know a technician you know you would never go out of business with that and that's what we need to start doing we need to start building up schools we don't have trade schools in our community and when we start building up trade schools like they said you know if you teach a person how to fish they would never hunger in their life again we don't even have summer summer jobs anymore now it's yes lot, you know the factories they all went to china like you know where mm -hmm. you can glue shoes together you know the heels together different things make plates we don't have that they don't have that anymore that was done with in the in the reagan era so, um, yeah, it's sad. It really, really is. It really is now. But I blame my people. Like I said, I'm not going to give you guys no excuse because you know that this time was going to come. You guys sat there and you juke and jab and, and you played and, and you allow these people to work overtime on you and, and you didn't do a thing about it. So when it comes, you know, don't sit there and say I should have, could have, because now is the time to make preparation because I promise you, they are working overtime. They are teaching their kids because I had dropped the video. I think it was like last month. I saw it on uh, Disputable. Uh, you ever went to, uh, he's an attorney. Uh, he goes by the name Disputable. You ever heard of uh, the, a YouTuber by the name Disputable? No, I know. Well, some, I'm, I'm going to send it to you. By the name of the lead attorney, the lead attorney. No, 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 no. His, his name is uh, Disputable. Let me see if I can find that clip where he shows some clips of is somewhere up north how they are training babies, training children, uh, neo Nazis, teaching them how to, you know, uh, you know, be, you know, it's really, you know, training them for war, civil war, babies. Well, that's they not are, new. We we knew that about the clan, you know. Yes, but I'm <laughs> saying right now they are training them right now, and what we are doing, we ain't doing nothing. Yeah, they're playing dress up in the woods, you know, about something that it's imaginary that they think that they're gonna do take take the country over. I, honestly, I don't believe in any of that. We have too many laws and too many too too much security for that to ever happen. They'll try like they did. January 6th, but mm -hmm. then they'll fail. You know, I don't believe that any, none of that, that they can't take over the country. They'll try. They'll try. Mm -hmm. But they but won't. I, I just don't, it. I don't put past them because, the, the, you know, if it comes to something like this and we are not prepared, you know, uh, then, you know, what could we do? You know, what could we do? Especially when we already know how all this thing came about, you know, they didn't sit there and, and just up all of a sudden just woke up and say, Oh, I want to put you back in slavery. They had to have a whole force behind all this is, especially when it comes to the Jim Crow, look at some of the, the movies, you know, and read some of the histories, you know, how Jim Crow came about. It was not just racist people in the woods just planning on, oh, I, I need to put, you know, certain people into slavery. No, they had entire government backing them up. All mm -hmm. these uh, 
people that that wanted to, you know, get off grid. And, you know, even when it comes to the Black Panthers, even uh, some of the Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I mean, a lot of people, you know, they had the government and it was dropping bombs on them, flying airplanes in Philadelphia over these people and and just destroying towns and all this, you know. So, like I said, you know, these people have an entire military force that is behind them backing them up, you know? Yeah. So, yes. who to say, you know, it's not just these old rednecks, you know, in the backwoods, you know, just plotting. No, no, not at all. Not at all. And that's why I sit there and say, you know, it's time for when it comes to our people, you know, it's time for us to stop fighting over religion, stop fighting over e each other. You know, it's time for us to sit there and, and put that aside for now and come together. Because when we come together, we can be a force to be reckoned with. And that's real talk. But people don't see that, you know, people don't don't they'll never believe you. You can speak that until you're blue in the face and they'll think that you until crazy. it's too late. You're right. They won't Let me play you. this right quick. I want you to I want you to see this right here. I want you to see this right quick. OK, if it's not drama. Welcome to the bullpen. Women rights on human rights. Women rights on human rights. Women rights on human rights. Women rights on We have on the program investigative reporter from Raw Story who wrote this amazing piece, great investigative work about how uh, neo-Nazi groups are training children mm. for race war basically in the United States of America. What's happening inside of these neo-Nazi groups and how did you gain such significant access to be able to document all of this? Well, what's happening is a lot of um, online radicalization. Um, adolescents, teenagers, white boys who are uh, feeling alienated from society and getting radicalized by others who are older and then in turn radicalizing younger uh, people and um, they are are steeped in this toxic uh, internet culture of um, gore and uh, uh, racism and violence and then they are encouraging each other to um, commit crimes and propaganda vandalism to prove their commitments and escalating to more more violent activity. This is a great great piece of investigative work. Yes, it is. And that's uh, make sure you go and watch the entire video on Indisputable. Make sure you oh, go yes, to I his know. channel. I know. You who, know him? Yeah, I like him. I like him. Yes, I'm not he's, subscribed, but I, I like him. Yes. Yes, he's very informative. But this is the thing about it. Now, they can have neo Noxes training teenagers for a race war. But the minute when they see a inkling of our people Coming together, they going to dismantle that, you know, but why do they allow these people to live off the grid under the radar and you don't see, you know, no uh, FBI or anybody, you know, trying to dismantle it. But the minute when you see black young guys coming together, you know, the, the first thing they're going to say, oh, that's a gang. We about to go ahead and and dismantle that. But how can they sit there and get away with it all? With We never even heard of this. You don't even hear CNN. You don't hear bloggers even talking about how the neo-Nazis neo are training up teenagers, babies, for a race war. Where is the outcry? Thor, where is the outcry? People don't believe it until it's too late. And and it's something that they're not going to talk about. It's not gossip. It's not interfering in somebody else's life. It's not about putting somebody else down to make themselves better. So it's not a, a topic of interest to them. You know, But this going to affect us. Well, they don't see it that way. They're, it's, they're not interested. They don't see it. They're, 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 they don't see it. They don't care. That's it's other That's things. It's other things in the world. Gossip, gossip, and more gossip. You know, that's that that. more important than oh wow. So you know, don't be shocked. You know, don't be surprised. You know, when you turn on your news and and you hearing things worse than what we heard today. 
This right here, like I say, this is the start. And the reason why is because we are asleep. We allow these people to rock us to sleep. And like I said, I'm going to keep my foot on my people until I shake the hell out of them. Because as you see right there, these people are not playing. These people on their job. The, the devil is not going to sit there and sleep until he get exactly what he wants. But what we are doing, we are the ones that sleep, allowing these people to continue to rock us to sleep. They're woke, but we're not. We're, you know, shopping and gossiping and living, you know, living in La La Land. Like, there's really not going to be a race war out there. You know, but people people don't want to be warned. People just, they, they don't care. They're not interested. You know, if it's not a name brand, something about name brand or the Kardashian or... Entertainment, you, know, you right. Know, they, 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 they're not interested. Oh, what? A race war? Okay. You know, they'll look at you like you have 10 heads. They're not interested. And they think that they are protected by the power that be. You're not protected by the power that be. Oh, that's just a, a modern day plantation. A modern day plantation. That's all it is. You're not protected. I promise you. Mm -mm. You're not protected at all. So don't think that, oh, if we do this and if we go do that, oh, then we protect it. No, we are protected. Yes, we are. We are protected when we come together. Yeah, we are protected when we start building for ourselves. We are protected when we stop pouring our money into the system. We are protected when we start building schools, libraries, banks. Black businesses and stop tearing them down. Stop being in front of the television, watching these reality shows. Okay. Go outside and touch some grass. Start building. Start building small businesses instead of tearing each other business down. See, y'all don't want to hear this type of talking. Look, I got 38 people in here and only seven people, only seven people went ahead and hit like because this right here, it causes our ears to bleed. And I'm talking to my people. Even if I got to continue, just like I say, whipping the hell out of them because enough is enough. No longer we're going to continue sitting there allowing these people to work overtime on us. No longer. So let's go ahead and continue uh, listening to a little more because this is real. This right here is not a reality show. This is not a reality show. This is real. It's real. Uh, inside the neo-Nazi hate network, grooming children for a race war by Jordan Green, investigative reporter. Oh, I got to ask you about law enforcement and potential involvement uh, because mm -hmm. I, 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 I got to say it, dear brother. They're giving if, an update if now. These were black children. This man. Engaged. Oh, so they're giving an update? Yes. So this right here, guys, we still talking about the breaking news of a man. He's, they said that he was a Let protester. Let me go on and hear what they're saying. I'll be back, okay? Okay, okay. Right. So uh, Star, she'll be right back. Uh, she's watching the news, so you know she can give us an update to see what was going on. But it's saying that a man, he's a protester. Uh, he went ahead and he set himself on fire. You know, I, I don't know uh, the reason why, what his motive, but I truly believe that these people think that, you know, they can turn back the time that they can go back into what I call the wild, wild west. And it, it is very scary. At one time I sat there and say, you know, uh, that would never happen. But they have a way. Like I say, the system is not broken. The system is only doing what the system is designed to do. The system is not broken. And they have a way to sit there and put you back into what I call slavery, bondage. That's why it's time for our people, you know, it's time for us to shake off these grave clothes and come out of her. It's time for us to start getting serious. And the only way that we can break those chains and come out of her is that we got to sit there and start pouring back into our own community because we can do it. We can do it. Like I said, we are the lifeline to everything that exists. Everything that exists because they are not afraid. If you can sit there and, and, and put gasoline and, and light yourself on fire for your calls, what that's trying to tell you, these people are not afraid to die for their calls. But the thing about it is that we not only want to die for our calls, we don't even want to live for our calls. We don't even want to support each other. And the first thing when someone starts talking like this, oh, it would never happen to us. Well, it is. 
It's just that you so busy sitting there entertaining the things of this world where you really don't see what's going on. We got neo-Nazis training up babies, babies, guys, for a race war. And what we doing? Running, trying to find the latest cell phones. The, the, the latest designer clothes, living from paycheck to paycheck, robbing Peter to pay Paul, trying to keep up with this European system. Don't you know we spend billions of dollars, trillions of dollars just on hair products? That money is not going into our community. That more money is leaving our community and going back to some country overseas to careers. And they are the ones. They're not going to give you a dime. But yet we're spending trillions of dollars, $1.2 trillion just on beauty supplies. Just imagine, guys. Just imagine if all that money would be right there into our black community. But like I said there and say, we are not good stewards. We want to spend, we want to keep up with the Joneses and inside living like the Walters. I see my girls in the house, Logical Speak. How are you doing, Lodge? How are you doing? I'm gonna drop the mic in case you wanna come on. But this right here, this is real, guys. Like I say, you know, we can entertain you guys as much as, you know, we can. But, you know, it's time for us to sit there and, 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 and come out of her. So let's go ahead and play just a little bit more. This kind of activity, the conversation will be about gangs, how we got to make an example out of them, how we have to break this up, how we got to stop this from happening, et cetera. Uh, DAs would hold press conferences. Sheriffs would say, not in my town. Go so let's go ahead and talk about this, what is disputable uh, talking about. If it was a black gang, you're going to see the sheriffs, you're going to see the CIA, the FBI, they're going to dismantle if it's a black gang. Oh, my God, they're not going to let that happen in their town. We sitting there wants to be the police, the, the, the juror, the executor. When the minute something happened to our own people, like I said, they say, let these people do their jobs. Look how we sitting there making videos on top of videos when it comes to P. Diddy. That's what they got the uh, law enforcement for. These people don't need your jobs. It, it just irks me. It, it, it's like a punch in the gut. When I see these YouTubers making videos back to back, back to back, trying to help these people do their job. But with the real enemies, the real demons, they sit there and they take their head and they stick it into the sand. We don't want to talk about what's really going on. But let it be one of our people. Oh, my God. We will help them do their job. We would take their head and we would sit there and hand it over to them on a civil platter. So let's see what the update was Starbucks lovers. So guys, like I said, welcome to Real Talk, unapologetic and nine buys. So his name, what you got? His name is Maxwell. And he was he's from um, St. Augustine, Florida. And um, he was born in 1987. And he came sometime this week. And um, according to the police officer, his family had no idea that he was even in New York. Wow. So he's what, 37 years old, right? And the young, young. And that's what it is. The devil, he using them young. He ain't using them old, but he using the young, teaching the young. It's time for us to teach our own people now. How are you doing, Lodge? What you think I'm, about all this stuff is going on? I'm fine, Lady D. How are you all this afternoon? Girl, look, you know I'm still supposed to be resting, you know, but I was coming out Saturday, but I just had mm. to come out with this breaking news because this right here, this is not a reality show. This is real life issues. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm getting prepared for my uh, my guests to come in this weekend. These, uh, my son, wife, and they kids and my my great granddaughter is having her little birthday party. Saturday. Okay. So everybody coming in from all ends. <laughs> yep. So, uh, girl, what's going on? Well, they said that a uh, a man went ahead and and, and then he was young. Star say he was how old? Star. Thirty seven. Thirty seven oh, went ahead and lit himself on fire. And and like I say, these people are not afraid to die for their cause. He's in oh, critical my. condition. In Cornell mm -hmm. University. Wow. Oh my goodness. You know, there's gonna always be some fanatics and some, you know, 
people that are not so mentally stable in every group. I mean, we dealing with that here in our group, you know? Absolutely. Some idiots, fanatics. I, you know, is he okay? The guy. He's in, according to what Star oh, no. just reported, he's, he's in critical he's, condition. Oh, my goodness. He's in the burnt unit. Yeah. He's oh, not my goodness. Well. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty sad. But he I, has to have some type of, you know, mental uh, instability going on to do that to himself. That is really sad. But they are. They all are. Look how they did in, in January. What That was 2022, right? Or 21. When they went and over uh, turned the capital. Oh, yeah. It was a host of them. Yeah, that day. A whole bunch of idiots. You know. But, you know, so a lot of people get overzealous when it comes down to their beliefs. You know, we got to have our beliefs. There's nothing wrong with protesting. But you got to use some common sense. But... You know, I bet they won't try that one again. <laughs> I, I believe they will because they ready to die for their calls. Well, it's sad. It's really sad. I, I truly believe that this is not the first. This is just what I call the beginning. And look mm -hmm. what, in my opinion, said they already took black history out of school. See, they don't want us to know our history. Because they wow. are embarrassed and they think that, oh, they can continue, you know, regurgitate all this stuff that had happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's a possibility that one time I thought that it would never happen, but they have a way to set the system where they can put us back into slavery through prison, through incarcerating, to starving us out. And all this other stuff that they're trying to create with AI and robots, you know, well, there's so much stuff with the jobs. Look at the jobs. You know, now the robots are replacing jobs. So what you think that these true. people are going to do if they don't have no jobs? It's gonna be what are they going to do? It's going to be a mess. You are right. correct. They're, they're trying to silence black history because the history books are so evil they speak on how evil white people have been. And mm -hmm. what they don't want, what they don't want is the young whites to feel sorry and uh, for what their ancestors did, feel mm -hmm. guilty about what their ancestors did. Absolutely. You know, so they try to uh, keep them from uh, knowing what happened back during slavery because you know their parents are not telling them about it. Absolutely. More like embarrassing. Yeah, it's embarrassing, and what they don't want is uh, because these these kids are not idiots. They mm -hmm. know when something is right and when something is wrong, and they really love black people. They love these black artists, like uh, they love simply the black red. culture. They, the they black love culture. black culture, so that's the reason they're they're trying. I believe that's the reason they're trying to silence uh, our history because it makes them their ancestors look like. The monsters that they were, you know. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, it's like we forget who we are. You know, we wants to help cover it. We wants to mm -hmm. help bear it, and we saying, "Oh, we don't need to reminisce and relive of what our forefathers or slavery." Let's yeah. move forward. These people, they don't want to move forward. They wants to move forward long as they are in the lead. Yeah, some of our people want to forget. And act like slavery didn't happen, Jim Crow and all the lynchings and the way black people were treated. But the majority of us, we will never forget. At you know? all. At all. Uh, the majority of black people understand what our ancestors went through. It's only that, you know, minute few that feel like, you know, they need to be put to bed, but it ain't going nowhere. Because I'm sure you speak to your uh children is when they were coming up about slavery and what happened and i'm sure your children are explaining to their kids what went on we ain't gonna let them just die down well my son and i uh and, mm -hmm. and you know, my son is very high rank you know and he okay. told me it, it's a possibility you know well he he's a, a diehard democrat you know if yeah. you don't vote you're going back you know into slavery <laughs> and, all that, and i went ahead and i i you know I had to tell them all, but then, you know, as I start seeing how things are now unfolding, you know, I don't think it's because of we don't vote uh, Democrat that we're going to go back and slave. Because like I said, you know, I rather know your snake and, you know, pretend you, you, you something else, you know, it got the good plantation, you know, the good master as well, but inside just a raven wolf. So wow. that's not 
uh, you know, if you don't go and do this, then this is what's going to happen. No, what's going to happen if you don't pour into your own community, stop sabotaging other black businesses and start getting these uh, trade schools and, and, and uh, getting, you know, banks and, and, and entrepreneurs into your own community. That's how you're going to be able to break those generational curses. Right. In my opinion, says they don't want our kids to be better. Too many blacks are finally speaking out about pay and racial disparity. That's that's true. All on the internet, there are black people speaking out about the difference in pay, the way black people are being treated, uh, the way the migrants are being treated uh, better than uh, black people in their community. Yeah, everybody ain't, 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 ain't just sitting back, you know, twiddling their thumbs. You know, black people mm -hmm. are speaking out. You know? mm -hmm. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you, you you guys are welcome to come on uh, if you want to come on and we can talk about this issue because this mm -hmm. is a, a much needed issue. And I like uh, logical how you went ahead and brought up the migrants. To me, uh, that right there should be a red flag. You know, you get these mm -hmm. migrants in here oh, and, and yeah. dumping them into black communities, you know, already poverty communities, mm -hmm. you know, some of them and, and dumping them there, uh, getting these people vouchers. I was reading somewhere in Chicago, they're giving them a, a $9,000 voucher, you know, for rent and food, license. Mm -hmm. what, the, what the heck these people need license? And then they said that some of them are living in five stores hotels. Wow. Yeah, they, most black people are not just sitting back twiddling their drums in Chicago. They, right, they are right now trying to recall that mayor. He's only been in office about a year, year and a half. They're trying to recall him and throw him out of office. But those black people in Chicago, they are not taking this laying down. They are protesting. And uh, this is another reason why, like I said, I, uh, I'm, I'll be 68 years old in jail. I was a diehard Democrat all my life until here recently. Now I have to go with who's going to be the best candidate for our economy to send these migrants back where they came from get our money right and so for me that's not biden absolutely absolutely i see yeah. i am always in the house what are your thoughts about all this how are you doing imo in my opinion how are you doing it's in my opinion i'm doing i'm doing fine y'all i'm glad that i was able to meet y'all let me tell you something. The one thing that they try to do is to keep us from growing, keep yeah. us from raising out of the spot that we're in. And as long as we create a space where we keep tearing each other down, they like that. Yeah, they'll, they'll let you keep doing that. And that's the thing that I hate about being on YouTube is that we always are. I find and I find it hard to believe that it's always black women that love to tear another black woman down, love to yeah. bring her down. It's like when did we stop standing up for each other and saying, Hey, it's enough room on this place for everybody to eat? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so as long as they see us, as long as they see us divided and, and they can wear their way in there and create this level of toxicity that we keep carrying on, they're gonna keep on dividing us. And they're going to keep on conquering us because they do this as a way to get through to us. It's Absolutely. just like Trump. He's trying to get in by telling y'all he's going to give y'all some stimulus payments. But please believe, <laughs> he say is not the final say who running this is Congress. It's mm -hmm. never the president. Mm -hmm. They make That's all funny. these. They make all these vows and say, oh, we're going to do this when we get in office. But you can't hold them to that because they have to have the Congress on them side for them to run this thing. And if the House and the Senate say no, them bills don't get passed. Absolutely. I understand, in my opinion, but here's the way I see it. By executive order, there can be some changes made. And I'm not talking about stimulus checks. What I'm talking about is the state of our economy, our gas prices, the prices of food. You know, this is what I feel like he's going to be able to do. That Biden well, see, this is the thing. 
he can't do executive orders on those type of things. Those things actually have to go through a Congress. And that was the thing I had to learn when Barack was in office because I was mad at him too because I was like, mm-hmm. you black, you already know our struggles and you didn't yep. do what you were supposed to do. But mm-hmm. then I to take into consideration that they don't want us this because they don't want us to know. Mm-hmm. But these presidents are just like us. They they tired and bound too. If they don't have Congress and House on them side, mm-hmm. then they can't do it. And these That's- Republicans want something in return. It's just mm-hmm. like when they were saying... Oh, mm-hmm. we, we'll give y'all the money to stop the government from going into a default if mm-hmm. y'all give us something in return. Mm-hmm. It's like, why well, we got to give you something in return? Y'all mm-hmm. sit here till y'all 90 years old, sit on these dang Congress things. Mm-hmm. Look at look at these people. I mean, they was out here passing out on the floor, and they still got a job. Now, make that make sense. <laughs> Absolutely, in my opinion. And when that's what my son was, my son was teaching me like to the same, what you were saying. Table. I've done well on the both presidents and with the stock market. So I have no complaints on the Trump and definitely Mm -hmm. on the um, Biden. Mm -hmm. My numbers, my stocks are going higher and higher and higher each day. That's great. That's wonderful. Yes. Yes. Both presidents been on. So that hasn't. Yeah. The gas of price. I mean, we can't have prices like back in the 70s, 90 cents, you know, it's Mm -hmm. the economy prices have to go up just like food, you know, things have to go up. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, whoever says that they're doing bad, it's because maybe they haven't applied themselves. Maybe they're Mm -hmm. just going to complain. Maybe I I, I don't know, but But it's not too much. It's not too much complaint because you remember the redlining, uh, how they say, you know, Anybody can live in the United States. All they have to do is pull up their boots, uh, straps, but they also set barrels for our people. You know, people was buying houses. You remember I did a little article, uh, who that was Willis, uh, Willis White, you know, when he had a beach in, in California and how they were saying that, you know, it, it was a part of, uh, you know, the state, you know, where the, the piping and, you know, the water system and mm-hmm. they went ahead and took it from him just to go ahead and sell it to some rich uh, millionaire. And he went ahead and, and he purchased a result, you know, and how these black homes, you know, they was forced out their homes with, you know, all this, you know, this stuff. So you could do with all you can, but races, you know, it's going to continue sticking their their ugly head out. And that's why I sat there and say, in order to go ahead and, and chop this head down, we got to start pouring into our community. We got to start building up schools, trade schools, and, and teaching our kids how to sit there and work with their hands and start building up their own community. Well, let me ask you this, ladies. <clears throat> do, you, do you guys believe that the price of oil drives up the price of everything? Yes, yes. I do. Yes. yes, it triggers down everything. Yes, right. Uh-huh. Okay, do you remember when um, the pipelines were open and flowing here in the United States and we were not oil dependent on the Middle East? Yes, and what, what president did that happen under? Uh, under Bush, no ma'am, Reagan, no ma'am, Clinton, in my opinion, Clinton, no. It was Barack. Barack. No. Oh my. No. Come on. Come on. Donald Ooh. J. Trump. Wow. Oh, Lord. We were pumping oil here in America. Our oil prices were down. I remember I was paying two dollars and thirty cents a gallon. No, but it started. It started with Barack. Barack put those things in place, and the reason it was tore down is because of Donald J. Trump. Barack put those things in place, just like he put. Um, Obamacare in place. It needed tweaking. It definitely did. But he put all that in place. Well, um, well, let me ask you this. Trump got in there and decided he was going to tear all that down. Let me ask you this in my opinion. Once uh, Biden took office, did he stop the pumping of oil in America? Lord. He can't, he can't fix it without Congress. By executive order, as soon as Biden went into office, he shut down the pumping of oil in America. That was his he tried first. To do executive, he tried to do executive order on student loans, and they cut that out. Yeah. He okay. did it three times, trying to do loan forgiveness. 
I'm gonna Google it for you. I'm gonna Google it for you. I'm gonna. In my opinion, Biden is, has been the far. The hey, hey, guys! Uh, I need you all to lower your mic some because it's a feedback. I'm gonna Google it for you. He needs to go home next. When is it? Next year, and just hang out with his dog, Mayor. That's it. And okay. I don't know what's gonna. Yeah, he happen definitely needs to retire. Yeah. What was Biden's first executive order? When he took office, <clears throat> too soft. He's too soft on immigration. I'm sorry. I don't understand how uh, immigrants have more rights than Americans who have paid their dues as citizens. I, I don't get it. I do not get that. And that's the reason, and this war, these two wars, that's the reason why Biden will never, in my opinion, see office again. He's done. He's done, mm -hmm. done. Let me get to it like this, did Biden. Done, done. Shut down. Right here, I got when President Barack Royal. Obama took office in 2009, he signed several executive orders one of the notable executive order he signed was the ethnic com uh, commitment by executive branch personal order. This order aimed to strengthen ethnic standards in the executive branch and promote transparency and okay. accountability. I it got it for you in my You got opinion. it? Okay, yeah, I got, got it. it. In a sweeping win for climate and environmental advocates, the Biden administration finalized the rule to ban fossil fuel drilling on nearly half of the national petroleum reserves in Alaska. Biden did that, which made us energy dependent, oil dependent on the Middle East again, which drove up oil prices, gas prices. Biden did that as soon as he took office. Therefore, our bread is high, our meat is high, Everything is high. When gas goes up, you're going to pay triple for everything. Point blank and period. The Biden Council oil and gas that Trump put in office. In, a, in an aggressive move that angered Republicans, Republicans, the Biden administration Council, the seven remaining oil and gas leases in Alaska that Trump put in in order Overturning sales helped the Trump administration waning days and pro pro proposed stronger protections against development. Biden did that. Trump put that, had us drilling our own oil here in America. Well, we have enough oil right here where we don't even have to. Yeah, um, but we're not see. pumping it because Biden shut it down, which drove up all the Alaska prices. Is one, Alaska is only one of the oil bases here, though. Texas has the biggest. Also, they were drilling in another area um, that the in some Indian land they were drilling. I don't I don't know if that was Pennsylvania or Ohio, but um, they're saying here that it was the Alaska pipeline that he shut down. Biden did that, which drove up the prices of oil, made us have to go back to the Middle East and start buying oil, which is now a hundred dollars a barrel. When it was down to fifty or sixty dollars a barrel under Trump, <laughs> oh boy, you got something to say about it? Independent? Yes. I, here's the thing. I think what you're getting the last cross fit is he did. It. If there's more oil here, first of all, Texas is the biggest oil change there is, and nobody's going there. Why? Because Texas does not want to be associated with the U.S. anymore. They're trying to actually get their grid to where they're monetized from the United States. They want to be their own country. That's the reason why their grid keeps falling, because they are actually trying to be their own country, because they actually want what's better for their state. Okay. That's the thing. That's the thing. And they're not just going to let you drill their stuff out. That's what it is. And let's be clear, Alaska was charging them 50 cents 
a barrel because they were getting them on the back end. Biden they, cancels. They publicize what they want us to hear. Okay, here's another one. Biden cancels last oil and gas leases in Alaska's Arctic refuge overturns sales held by Trump. I'm not. I'm not telling you no lie. I'm telling you the, I'm, I'm, uh, the honest to God. I Listen, I'm not saying you lying. I'm saying what they publicize is inflated. Yeah. Who is the source? Who wrote this article? Yeah, who wrote that article, uh, Lodge? I bet it's on ABC. Right. Or somewhere from Russia where they want to make him look... I mean, I don't have anything against Trump. Mm. I don't care. I don't, like, let's, let's be clear. I don't like neither one of them as a candidate, okay? Exactly. I really don't. I don't so, like Biden as a president. I don't like... I definitely don't want Trump. Because here's the yeah. thing. When a man get in office and he calls mm -hmm. an insurrection, he calls these racist as people to come out and try to be racist toward our people. When he calls mayors and senators to start dividing and conquering our states to make it well, they gonna only vote Republicans. That's when it's a problem. Because now my voice is being silent. And why should I have to lower my voice mm -hmm. to speak my truth? Well, I, um, I have to say the economy is my main, you know, main, um, I was in a chat last night, right? And I, I don't, I don't get into racism. Ain't no white person start walking up to me saying nothing. Mm -hmm. I was in a, it was in a chat last night. So I, I don't was, play that, um, uh, race baiting crap. Ain't no white person start walking up to me saying not one solitary word without getting jacked. <laughs> okay, well, well let me I tell you something. Why, why are you saying? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, no, hold on, no, no, hold on one second. Hold why on one second. That it's, hey. it's people that are actually their kids are being attacked by the government that's supposed to protect us. I just saw a video that went viral of a 13 year old outside of Walmart being bent up like a Brussel just for selling flowers outside of Walmart. Now, where is that illegal at? Well, you know, in the area that I live, black kids get jacked up all the time by their own people. Mm -hmm. But I'm just oh, saying, so does it make it right that our law enforcement that's supposed to be here to protect the service has oh, the right to shoot? They ain't doing that no more. They ain't doing oh, that no more. But they are. That's what I'm saying. They are. You know, uh, because of so much of the police, uh, what did uh, what did they want to do? Dismantle the police? Half of the time, the police don't even come when there's a call. Oh no, not where I live. If where I, I live right her, now. Not, not where I live. Twenty either. cars right now. Yeah. In front of you better be too. ready to protect yourself. Nope. Mm -hmm. Not where, well, I, that's where true I live. Too. Well, that's true too. Uh, I stay strapped. I ain't gonna even lie. Ain't no white uh, person story. running up on me saying, "No, nah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, worried about. I'm not afraid of no white people. I ain't afraid of no black people. I don't get into race baiting. Yeah, and I don't get into fear mongering. I'm not no, afraid of the white man." Let's see what Star have to say. Go ahead, Star. I was in the chat last night, and it was an interesting conversation. There were two men arguing. One about using the N word, and um, the other man about using a Hispanic um, slur, right? Mm -hmm. So there were, it was four on a panel and then these two men arguing about these two words. One of the men, I think he's from Ireland somewhere, from somewhere, Ireland or somewhere like that. He was saying that it's okay for a white person to use the N word because it's a freedom of speech and that people are too sensitive now because they, they, they can use the N word, but a white person cannot use the N word. And why cannot when it's under freedom of speech, the first amendment? Well, let them use it. Let the white person use it and see if they I have teeth I in their mouth. I couldn't believe. I couldn't let them believe. use. They can use. They can say whatever you chicken tongue. I tongue couldn't say believe they want. it. And this is what's going on, and this is what goes on in my neighborhood. That because, you know, white supremacy, it's all out in the open. They have the power. They think that they have the power that they can just call, 
you know, use the N word and it's okay because it falls under the first amendment. Well, let Freedom them use it. Speech. You can use whatever word you want to use, but you better make sure you use it indoors in, in, in around mm. your own people because I couldn't believe you it. might want to get up I could not because this generation it. right here, this is what I call a Joshua generation and they are not playing. This is a fierce generation mm -hmm. that God is raising up. So let them continue with all that racist slurs and you're going to no, see. And he uh, was, go ahead. Uh, this go man ahead. was serious. This man was. Of course they're serious because serious. they are racist. They he of believes course. what he believed that it didn't matter that it bothered this individual that if you're not part of the race you shouldn't say the word you should mm -hmm. stay in your place this man was saying that this is what's going on in his country they're trying mm -hmm. to suppress the freedom mm -hmm. of speech and if he feels like calling saying the n-word that he's entitled to say that well, word. he entitled to say whatever and he wants, you shouldn't like be said. hurt you shouldn't be, you shouldn't well, have any Well, all I just say, it. all I say, uh, Star, let him say whatever he want to say, and I promise you he'll be picking up his teeth, okay? Go ahead, in, in my opinion, and then logical. I just think that the reason why they're so combative and the reason why they feel like they have this is because Trump has put the battery in their back. Mm -hmm. Wow. And while I don't agree with none of these policies, like I said, we need some more people to step up and become mm -hmm. in that front seat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I need somebody that's going to actually stand on business to run for president. But none mm -hmm. of these candidates is it. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, it could be regional, too, and where you live. Well, I live in a predominantly black community, 98 percent black. Ain't no white folks running up in here calling nobody no N word or nothing else. Mm -hmm. But when I speak to one of my sons that lives in San Diego, California, where it's extremely diverse, he has to deal with uh, white people talking crazy. Mm -hmm. Lord. You know? Mm -hmm. and so it could be where you reside and who you interact with, who's around you. I live, with, well, I'm going to tell you the truth, it's 99% black. Ain't no what ain't no racism up in here. Ain't nobody coming up in here messing with nobody black up in here. That's good. And get out of this community. Okay. Ain't no black person. <laughs> ain't no black person. I mean, no white person is coming up in my community. Jack. So it could be where you live too. You know, Not what you either. experience. Everybody's experience is different. So I don't have no fear for white people. Me I don't either. live around them. Well, I live in an all-white neighborhood. I think okay. I, I might be maybe about two two blacks. I remember okay. when my son, but see, the thing about it, in my neighborhood, we I've been here like almost 30 years, and mm -hmm. all our children, you know, grew up together, okay? Mm. But the thing about it is with me, like I said, you know, I'm a Capricorn. I'm standoffish. Now, my husband, he be talking, and I don't have no problem. The only time mm. I had a problem with my son, you know, because he was playing football. And mm. I don't know if y'all do it in the city, but during homecoming, they 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 totally tissue your house, you know, throw tissue paper on your house. They, okay. No, so, that'll go down out here. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they uh, during homecoming, you know, uh, if your kid play football, they're mm -hmm. gonna ride around and tissue paper your house. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was going to pick up my son from school, and my next door neighbor she said, There and say, Are you going to pick up now? Mind you, they did her son that a couple of years when he mm -hmm. was in school. She said, Are you going to pick up this tissue paper? I said, I'm gonna pick the tissue paper up when I feel like it. This was so, a white woman, of course. Oh, uh, see, that don't of go down so mm -hmm. I said, There, oh my god, girl, you don't know me. Mm. I'm the wrong person to mess with, okay? So when she mm. said there and she told me I call her every name except a child of God, she called the police. Thank God. Like I said, they say I live in a very small town. My mm. mayor black, my, my, my sheriff black. You see what I'm saying? My sister is the assistant chief. Mm. So like I said, she called the wrong people. They said they say if you don't get in your house, and then the thing about it, her husband, he's very nice, told her to get in the house. Look, you don't mm -hmm. tell nobody this is the homecoming spirit. This is what mm -hmm. the kids do. 
You know, mm -hmm. ain't no tissue paper in your yard. And if tissue paper fly in your yard, you just pull it up. But like mm -hmm. I say, we don't have it like that. You know, in a city, you know, got so much stuff going on. But the thing about it, you know, anybody that, you know, come up and, and thinking just because it's freedom of speech to call someone mm -hmm. the N-word, I mm -hmm. promise you, most mm -hmm. likely that person going to be picking up their own teeth. I had a friend that was a, a airline stewardess uh, 15 years ago. She moved to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I don't know if any of you all know where that yes. is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm from Alabama, so I know all about it. And she told me that, well, that's where her mom was from. Her mom got sick, so she had to leave the North to go to the South. And she called me every day talking about how miserable she was. She said she would see those Confederate flags uh, white people would be calling them the N word. She mm -hmm. hated it. Well, she had to be there because her mom was sick. Uh, being born and raised here, I mean, when she left, she was like 37 to go and take care of her mom in Tuscaloosa, which I believe is uh, a college town or um, university. Yeah, university of Alabama. Right. And she did tell me that she experienced a lot of racism. At, but she couldn't leave her mom to come back home. So I I have to be more sensitive because it depends, I think, on what region you live in, your experience with white people. Mm -hmm. All of Alabama is racist. Let me tell you, even if you're in the black communities, yeah. you experience racism on a different level. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's like, okay, so in our black communities, it's like, they don't give a damn about our schools, so your schools don't suck. Mm -hmm. They don't give a damn about the people there, so your living is gonna suck. Mm -hmm. And th that's what I hate. That's the reason why I hate that when Love and Marriage Huntsville came on, they could have made a uh, made it where Alabama would have been better. And Absolutely. instead, they decided to go with the foolery, and that's what pissed me off. Because yes. I'm sitting here, and I'm like. You could have made a difference in this state. And instead, all y'all wanted to do was tear somebody down because somebody wanted to sleep around. Bullshit. Yeah. Absolutely. Name Absolutely. a woman that ain't been cheated on. Thank you. Absolutely. I Thank don't know you. one. Me when my son did, you know, pull my coat and told me, Ma, you don't deal with what I got to deal with. You know, uh, he knows that I am a Trump supporter and he wasn't until biden got reelected, now he's a trump supporter he sees what happened with the economy but he did tell me that my experience what i deal with here where i live is totally different than what he deals with in san diego and mm -hmm. so i apologize if i seem to be insensitive to the uh to whoever's experiencing racist uh, treatment from white. He did tell me that white people got really emboldened during the time when Trump was president. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. Um, uh, uh, he makes he reminds me of that on the regular. I don't yeah. deal with it, but he have to deal with it. Which he that's the reason he didn't want Trump to be reelected. Mm -hmm. But now that the economy is so horrible, he's decided to vote for Trump in twenty four based on the economy. I don't know if anybody knows anything about San Diego. No, but no, I experience every day when I go out, mm -hmm. I live in a Trump County mm -hmm. where everybody loves Trump and they look down on others. Oh. And when I go to the supermarket, Target, mm -hmm. Starbucks, wherever I go, I telling you, I experience mm -hmm. racism and I've been living in this neighborhood for 15 years now mm -hmm. and I go out at least three or four times a day. So just mm -hmm. imagine. I think I the, the economy is driving uh, people, especially black people, because, you know, black people haven't been voting for no Republican. But the economy and the price of things is what's driving mostly black men, not black women, to side with Trump. It's based on their pockets. So, well, I, let me tell you something. I'm not, here, here's the thing. I'm not a Trump supporter. And I'm never going to support him uh -huh. because I feel like he set us back. Really? I feel like him. Yes, because he, he got in there and then that's when the women's right was dismounted. I really? feel like he, 
he he lay he he got those people in that justice department in the Supreme Court uh -huh. for the simple fact that he wanted us to not have our free rights because he believed that life starts at the beginning. And oh, while I don't about, um, while I don't agree mm -hmm. while I don't agree with abortion, uh -huh. I feel like a woman has the right to choose what she does with her own body. It's not my okay. place. And it's not no man's place, and it's not mm -hmm. no justices that they done lined up in the Supreme Court job mm -hmm. to tell a woman whether she can have one or not. Oh, I'm not an abortion supporter either, but what he wants to do is put the, uh, you know, abortion rights in the hands of the particular state. Of course. Uh, no, he didn't put it in the hands of the state. He took it away. It's illegal now. It's illegal. It's, every illegal. State. it's only certain states that it's illegal. No, it's illegal in all states. They say you can be criminally charged. That's the reason why they mm -hmm. stopped IVF because the doctors here can uh -huh. be charged if these people get inseminated and have a miscarriage. The mm -hmm. doctors can now be sued. No, they dismantled that. You don't have well, to you know. You're so you are saying abortion has been banned illegal. in every state. All, in every state. In every state. If you caught giving an abortion and if you're caught getting one, you can be held in contempt and go to jail. Yes, you can. Can you tell us what you no, have got? I that don't think so. At? Not in blue um, states is not illegal. No, uh, not in blue states. But I'm no. Googling it just to see. Is oh, abortion go ahead and Google. illegal? Go ahead and Google the IBL ban too because they said they're going to lock up doctors. Okay, uh, in my opinion. It says here some states prohibit abortion at all stages of pregnancy a few exceptions others permit up to a certain point in a woman's pregnancy while others allow abortion throughout a woman. it's not illegal in every straight uh, in my opinion oh well let me see what's your email i'll send it to you you gonna send me what i'm gonna send you the band i'm gonna send you the rule it's oh, no, a I'm rule of hold, hold on, hold I'm on, hold look, on. I'm Googling it now. Pull, uh, pull up your information uh, so we can make sure that we give facts, okay? Uh, Let's see. In my opinion, so where, is where did you get that? Where did, so we could, where did you get the article at? So I can go ahead and pull it up for you. Put it in the back chat. I, I pull it up. I, I could pull it up. Just give me the uh, the article that you pulled it up on. Okay. I don't see it. Okay. Uh, where is abortion legal? Uh, upon the Planned Parenthood of America, you can type that. It's not illegal in every state. Like it, like I said, it doesn't make me, doesn't change my life. Who wins and who loses? But the one thing that I do agree with Trump is that immigration policy. Yeah, no, that's another reason why I support him. I the want him to immigration under Biden is. It's crazy. Awful. It's awful. It's awful. He's too soft. His administration is too soft. And I hope that if Trump does win, mm -hmm. he can fix that one big problem. That's yeah, uh, Lady D, you can also pull it up up under the CNN, which is uh, that particular news station. Their um, website, it says here, see where abortions are legal or banned. Mm. Say uh, two dozen uh, U.S. states have banned uh, only two dozen, and you know it's like what? How many states? Fifty. Mm. And only two dozen have banned abortions. And it's probably all the red states, right? Right. Well, I thought in my in my opinion said it was illegal in the entire United States. Am I wrong? Or am I right? No, it's not illegal in the. No, I thought she said maybe she didn't say that. Maybe I didn't hear her correctly. I didn't really hear. I just heard her say that it was illegal in all so states. Is she still here? Are you still here? In my in opinion? opinion. In my opinion. Oh, maybe she's gone. Yeah, maybe she. Yeah, no, I, she's still I, here. Hold on. Uh, she, she must have dropped. Hold on. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Cause I all right, she's back. I hey, happy. in my opinion. I put it in the back chat. I put it in the back chat. How many states are saying here is two dozen? Hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, yeah. hold on. Logical, logical. Yeah. Let me see I if I can you. pull it up. Uh, in my opinion, just posted it. I, I yeah, I'm yeah. finna pull it up so everybody can see it. 
Give me a second. Okay, y'all see it? Okay, I see what you post. It said, this is what, um, in my opinion, she said, Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade and in right to abortion upheld by decades. And let me see where this article is coming from. This is, where's this article? WBEZ is supported by Rouse Center for the Arts. I'm trying to see where this uh, where this article is says it says in a historical and far decision, the U.S. Supreme Court officially reversed Roe versus Wade on Friday, declaring that the constitutional rights to abortion upheld for nearly a half century no longer exists. Writing for the, is that saying for all fifty states? Well, let me see. Writing for the court majority, Justice Samuel Alito said that the 1973 wrote, uh, ruling and repeat uh, subsequent high court decision reaffirming wrote must be overruled because they were engagingly wrong, the argument exceptionally weak and so damaging that the amount to an abuse of ju uh, justice, judicious authority. I don't see where it says that the decision must of which was leaked in early May means that abortion rights will be rolled back in nearly half of the states immediately with more restriction uh, likely to follow. So it's, say, it's not saying all the states It's saying more likely for all for all practical purposes, abortion will not be available in large swaths of countries. The decision may well mean to that the court except as well as the abortion question will become a focus point in the upcoming fall election and in the fall. And there, uh, it, 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 this is what they trying to put on the table, but it, it's not, mm. you know, it's not ordered yet. This is what they propose. Yeah. It's state by state. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it so they got to the vote the this in. Yeah. It's depend yeah. on the state. Yeah. And that's what he said he would support. Each state yeah. will make their decisions for abortion. Yes. He's not going to make it nationwide, which makes sense to me. A girl from North Carolina who was 18, who had been being abused by her uncle, uh -huh. went to another state to get an abortion, and she's Is locked up now. Is that the girl now. that went to Florida? Is that the girl that went to Florida? I don't know. I, don't, I think she went to Ohio. Uh-huh. She was from North Carolina. Hold on, hold on, one second, hold on one second. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, um, God above everything. If you want to come up, I have to see your face in the background. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. You can carry him down now. Okay. All righty. So, guys, we got uh, God above everything. Uh, let her go ahead and say, uh, how are you doing? Hey. Hello. Hi. Uh. You have yep. something to say, Hi. God above How everything. Doing? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yes, doing great, doing great. How are you doing? I'm blessed. I'm here. You know. Okay. What How do you have? Doing? doing great, doing great. So, what do I'm you th sorry. your thoughts My about baby all boy this? Just woke up. Um, yes. What are your thoughts about all this? Y'all go ahead. I'm gonna take this call. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I feel like um, this is a spiritual thing, and I know mm -hmm. it may sound crazy to some people. Not at all. People used to sacrifice their children to uh, little G's back in the day, and they believed that was going to bless their country. They believed that was going to give them power. And the people that's doing it, I don't think they themselves worship those entities but I don't think our country is of God. And I think we, uh, that's why we have the problems that we have is because we worship uh, not the true God, you know, because we let certain things like this pass. Um, I understand abortion when someone is uh, in critical care, it's like a de life or death situation. The child is severely underdeveloped or there truly is something physically wrong with the baby and they wouldn't be feasible uh, after birth. But for these adults that are having unprotected 
uh, relations fornicating and making children and thinking they can just throw their lives away because they don't want to take care of their responsibilities. I'm against that. Absolutely. And there's, there's nothing to quote that is murder. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you're taking the life of a human being because you didn't want to use a condom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's irresponsible, but I feel like uh, our country is declining. I think that we are close to about to fall. I think that um, we're about to see things that we've never seen before. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. But I think that we have sugarcoated the abortion situation to make it seem like it's a right that people should have when it was truly serving a purpose for something else that was serving something else, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they're thinking they're coming in here and they, they synthesize people about life or death. These are taking the lives of children, not taking responsibility for their actions, running away from their responsibilities, making it seem like it's not that big of a deal because it's only an embryo. Right. And then they turn around and they produce, these are sacrifices in my opinion. So mm -hmm. I'm not for abortion. I think that it's a, I think it's a sacrifice. I think that um, when people go into those clinics and they take the lives of a child that didn't ask to be here, but you did the action to bring them here and you don't want to take care of your responsibilities, you are worshiping an entity unknowingly or knowingly in some cases, and you are, you're doing an evil action. I mm -hmm. wish they would abolish it. You know what I mean? I don't think any normal doctor, if somebody had an, um, a child in the ovary, right? Like in the, in the, what is the tube? Fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. If mm -hmm. a child was in a fallopian tube, no doctor would leave the child in that tube. It wouldn't right. be feasible, right? right? They would automatically have to terminate the pregnancy because that would not be a feasible pregnancy anyways. Right. A majority of the people that are trying to get these ABs are people that have able-bodied children that are healthy kids that would have no issues. It's simply that they want to go outside and do whatever they want to do, but they don't want to have to take care of the responsibilities. And then we really need to be against it as a people because we need to think about how many of our children, and when I say our children, I mean Black children, have been murdered by this means. How many of our people have been exterminated by these means. It's just, it's wicked, no matter how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to sound crazy, mm -mm, you, but that's you, how you, I feel you, about you, it. Yeah, yeah, because it's not yeah. only a physical war, we also fight in a spiritual warfare as well, mm -hmm. but we also have to be alert because we could sit there and and say we can blame Dottie Squad and everybody. Mm -hmm. But first, it starts with us because it says judgment is going to uh, begin in the house with us. So, mm -hmm. what are you doing, you know, to, to stop this? Are you allowing history to repeat itself? Because if not, it's just going to go around and round and round. When I look at the power that be, I look at them as our lower self. And when I say our lower self, is because, like I said, we are the head, you know, we are not the tail. We are but we are not beneath everything. If, if we start doing our research, you would know that we invented just about everything, but we don't own the patent. And it's amazing me. It's like a punch in the gut when I hear that they say that a black man in Africa invented the Internet, invented the stoplight, the refrigerator, on and on and on, the cell phone. But we don't see black businesses prospering. You know, we 1% right here in the United States, 1% of black businesses in the United States. That is horrible. That is horrible. And the reason why is because we act like children. We act like we got to be at the plantation. We can't sit there and do nothing for ourselves. We blame and die the squad and everybody, but what about us? Why we don't start sitting there and, and stop spending on material stuff? Like I talk about it all the time on my, ch my channel. We cannot build a solid foundation 
off of material possession. That's like building a house on sinking sand. And we can't keep playing the blame game because like I said, we are the lifeline to everything exists. And the buck stop with us when we stop being jealous, stop sitting there trying to tear each other down and start supporting each other. So whoever got the mic, go ahead. Anybody? I well, think with inventions, you know, black people have invented several, uh, a, a lot. But if you don't patent it, put your name on it. Absolutely. Someone else can come right behind you, steal all of your invention and put their name on it. A lot of Absolutely. it is happening. You know? And as far as spending money, I'm going to buy what I want to buy. Mm -hmm. From whom I want to buy it from. A lot of things I make myself, you know, as far as apparel. But ain't nobody going to tell me how to spend my money. But I'm talking about as a whole, you know, just say right now, like I say, if we do, let's, we could talk about reparation. You spend your money wherever you want to spend, but you cannot complain when you sit in there, uh, the power that be you working for them because sooner or later, you're not going to be working for them because they making robots to take your place. So I when you said that out there mm -hmm. robbing Peter to pay Paul, then you don't have no excuse because God said there and say, I gave you everything that you needed, but you was not good stewards. Well, do you guys think that some people are natural born employees opposed to entrepreneurs? Yeah, well, some people just meant to serve, but I'm sitting there and saying you can't complain if you work in a nine to five or you can't complain if the migrants come in and taking your nine to five. You can't complain. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead, Logic. Not I haven't heard. Uh, go be. ahead. Go ahead. Who got the mic? Well, I am pro-choice, mm -hmm. and a woman should have the right. Who have the mic? Who have the mic? Star. Star. Yes. Star. Okay. Should have the right to do whatever she wants with her body. And if let's say a seventeen-year-old goes out there, makes a mistake doesn't wear protection, the young man doesn't wear protection, she should be allowed to choose to do what needs to be done for, for her and her family and her future. And if that means getting an abortion, mm -hmm. then so be it. That's it. No one is going to be around when this young lady is going to need help financially, mentally. No one's going to be around for her. So mm -hmm. it's easy to say it's a sin. Yeah, it's a sin. But we all sin every single day. Whether it's our thoughts, we sin every single day. Well, I'm pro-life, but I don't begrudge the next person if, you know. Right, and I, I hate that these men, th that are men, men that are making these decisions for women. What do they know really about the body? About what it really means to be a mother? Not what it takes I do believe that it will be state by state um, decision. If you can't get it in your state, you might have to go over to the next state. You know? Well, we all have a right to our opinion, you know, to agree to disagree. And that's the uniqueness about it. And I think this kind of, uh, you know, platform needs to be more often, you know, not just because when something happened, like I said, I'm for life. I don't believe in that. It's not, you, you know, your job to take somebody else's life because that person could have been a doctor, a lawyer, right, right. or maybe the next president of the United States. I cannot sit there and, and see myself because of some mistake that I made, you know, because I don't believe that God makes a mistake. You can have the child. Uh, uh, I know my friend, my best friend wanted to have a child. You know, you can sit there and, and, and give the child up for adoption, but I'm not going to send my child to the slaughterhouse. I'm not going to do that because mm -hmm. I truly believe, you know, and, and like I said, you know, yes, I do have Christian uh, background, you know, which I don't call myself a Christian. I call myself a believer, but I truly believe that you have, you will answer for all the stuff that you've done. Well, I agree with you. Now, that's my belief. If, if we were standing in front of Yahweh right now, Absolutely. I don't think we would have the same talking points we're having right now. Right. If we were in front of the creator of all creators and creator of all the world, the be all, the end all, the alpha and the omega, I don't think we would be making excuses for the sins that we commit. Just because we are sinful beings doesn't mean we deliberately go out and commit the sin and then ask for grace afterwards because you can abuse such a thing. 
I think that's the reason why we're in the predicament that we're in because mm -hmm. the root of the problem is <laughs> we wouldn't have the high rate of abortion if we didn't have people that realize the sanctity and the seriousness of sex. Absolutely. But there's too many people that's fondicators. There's too many people that want to oh, live in this world. I'm, my dear, that genie is not going back in the bottle. No, you you know what? I, I don't care what nobody says. It's about mm -hmm. it, the household. My parents, the Absolutely. way they raised me up, I wasn't thinking about sex or doing anything sex-wise until I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and, and if that's the case, then Black people, our community, is hopeless, and we should not have these discussions. We should not worry about anything because the Jenny's already out of the bottle, right? It can't mm -hmm. be universal. And it ain't going back. So oh, oh it yeah, could go back team. because didn't he sit there and took Solomon Gomorrah back? judgment like i say judgment is judgment is here but it starts in your house so you know just because you see somebody else sitting there living loosely then that does not mean you have to that's why you know you have to train a child in the way that they should go yes the, mm -hmm. it can stop everything can come to an end nothing is all you know nothing is think eternal. about Nineveh. Nineveh. yes Nineveh yes. was disgusting and if, if Jonah didn't go over there and give them a warning, then people was given grace after they fasted. They changed that's, that's their way it. for a certain amount of time. But then they went back to their wicked ways. It but can that's be reversible, right. it, but yes, you have to have faith in God. And you have to be one of those people that is living in a line to God's word to mm -hmm. try to bring forth that change. You can't just give up and say the devil's going to win. That's it. it, it to Throw me, the that's the problem. Like We take sex and we think that it's a lighthearted thing. We don't realize that is my momo showed me that is you when you lay down with somebody you give a piece of yourself to that person and there's so many ways people try to make it seem but they're saying the same thing you're giving yourself to that person that is a sacred thing and people are taking something sacred hold up just a sec yeah um i believe you know Everybody See, but not everybody world. believes in no not yeah. everybody believes in in God and not everybody is into all that. People have different beliefs and people have different choices. Like let's say in some states, even if a 14-year-old gets the ard word, she has to carry to full term. What person in their right mind, what young girl is gonna carry something that was so evil, right? Something that was done to her. Mm -hmm. so evil and then put it up for adoption like i've that, seen a video of a girl that doesn't make, make sense to how me she raised the child choice. if she got out of rape so do, it happens do what you, you know? need to do yeah, if you happen. have to get rid of it that's it just do it that's mm, whatever it. i just feel like it's a spiritual thing and i also mm -hmm. feel like another reason why hiv is such a problem is our community is because of the recklessness and we don't see the sick even if you're not coming from a spiritual aspect it is coming from you're laying down with somebody and you're laying down with them unprotected and not all the people that are getting abortions are rape victims mm -hmm. so we can't even use that L you know let's use the r we don't when we use word yes not everybody's use r. getting rp mm -hmm. not everybody's having those things happen to them these are adults that are laying down having relationships with people not even relationships or relations because they don't take it seriously. And you don't even have to think of it as a spiritual aspect. You're putting yourself in jeopardy of getting a STD. People don't even yeah, think yeah, about yeah, it on yeah. that like, on that rest. Like we try to rationalize our wrong and try to make it seem like it's just a spiritual problem. But even if you take away the spirituality and you use your common sense, it's not beneficial to you as a person to lay down with somebody who doesn't care about you. And then you're mm -hmm. left with the pieces because you had more care for them and they used you as a person. They used your body. They used your intimate parts. And that doesn't have to do anything with, oh, I'm, I'm a believer of God or I'm an atheist. That's you being a human being with emotions. And but then that we goes add the both ways. That of goes you both actually ways. getting an STD because in our community, look up the stats. STDs run rampant. HIV is a real issue. People need to take ser sex seriously. Period. And if yeah, we I did, agree. we wouldn't have to worry about abortion. We wouldn't have to worry about ABs. If yeah, people wasn't going around, well, let, let's uh, let's start uh, yeah. after after. What's your name again? What you want me to call you? 
God above everything. Okay, God um, above everything. Uh, mm -hmm. After you finish uh, your statement, then start, then logical. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, finish it uh, out. I'm not trying to get emotional because I shouldn't. No, go ahead, go ahead. Th this is this is the reason why I set up my panel. I set up my panel to give you a voice. Okay, we all yes, have a right to agree to disagree. Okay, yes, and that's the uniqueness about it. So go ahead and finish what you have to say, then start, then logical. As, uh, in my opinion, is there? I'll go. Not last. logical star. Uh, go, uh, who after Mike? God above everything after Mike. Mm -hmm. Then star. Okay. Then logical. Go ahead. Okay, I'll say in grape. My opinion. I'm gonna say grape. And in my opinion, I feel like I am a person that believes in God. I do believe in the God of Isaac, Abraham, Jacob. You know what I'm saying? I believe in Him. I believe in Jesus or Yah. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you. I'm getting yeah, so like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in them, and I believe that life is Yahshua. And I feel like we, as a country, and this is how I know that we are out of touch, and we are just the. It's just when the root problem is, you don't even care about yourself and your body. For you to now to care about my body, my choice, but you're doing everything that's not beneficial for that body, putting yourself in jeopardy. Thank God you got pregnant instead of getting an STD. And even with that, you want to ruin a life. I imagine the mod people, if their parents thought the same way, a lot of us wouldn't even be existing right now to even have such an opinion. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I feel like life is sacred. I feel like um, children, these children, unborn children, shouldn't... Um, should not pay for the recklessness of someone's choices. And I'm tired of people using the talking points of a low percentage of things that are happening as a reasoning why you're ending a child's life. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. That, I, that's how I feel about it. Go ahead, Starbucks. Star? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, go, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you want to go ahead and elaborate of what uh, she said? No, not really. I'm just saying that God above can't everything. Be so, we can't be so judgmental who does what with their body, who lays down with what. That's their choice. And who are we to criticize them, to judge them? Only one person, a higher up, can be the judge of that, right? Not us. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to be out there and do their thing and then you know six weeks later they find out that they're with child and they want to make that decision whatever mm -hmm. works for them am i saying that's the right thing no but i'm not gonna judge them either that's mm -hmm. their choice mm -hmm. and their choice is their choice and i'm not here to judge anyone mm -hmm. go ahead lodge uh in my opinion yeah, I'm, I was yeah. waiting. Yeah, I was waiting my yeah. turn. My turn. She goes. She after you, Lodge. Oh, okay. Well, um, on that topic, uh, I believe that each and every one of us was born with free will, and um, I don't like to judge people. Abortion is not for me. In fact, mm -hmm. I've never taken a birth control in my life. Wow, are you serious? Years. You I, never? I'm sixty-eight years old. Back in those days, birth control was not um, as uh, popular or spoke about the way it is now. So how many, ch how many children you have? I had three. Wow. And never took birth control. Not one birth wow, control. That's interesting. In my life. You know, um, my mother, believe, you know, people, all the women uh, that were older than me, they believed in the rhythm. I don't know if you guys know about that. And um, uh, condoms. I've never taken a birth control pill. Each baby that I got pregnant with, I had it. I had three and that was it. You know? Wow. Um, so, no, I believe everybody has free will. I uh, don't believe in abortion, but I'm not going to begrudge the next person. Mm -hmm. because I believe everybody has their own mindset and can do with their bodies with whatever they please. Yeah. Be with in my opinion. Please. In my opinion. Okay, so my opinion is going to be a little different, and it's going to be for different reasons I'm going to give them out. As a person that works with younger kids and works with people who deal with trauma, I know that a lot of people that are out there that is sexually active like that usually is dealing with trauma. And to deal with that trauma, they allow their body to be that, 
vehicle mm-hmm. per se. So when you hear somebody that's out there like that, when you actually take in a story, usually these are people that have been uh, taken advantage of as a kid or has mm-hmm. been a, somehow manipulated into this, that you, whether they was ST'd, whether they was SA. Mm. Your mic drop. You still there? Is it right? No. I'm not going to judge somebody. But to say that somebody has a right to tell you what to do with your body, for me, is wrong. Yes, I believe in God and I believe that we should not be ending life. Life is beautiful. I have six wonderful kids. I don't take that for granted. Mm-hmm. I love my kids. You know what I'm saying? Even when I didn't think I wanted the ones that I had, I still took it on. And God leading and directed me, ordered my steps the way he wanted it to go. But that's because I'm a strong believer that God does not make a mistake. Yeah. So when he gave it to me, he gave it to me for a reason. And, I, and here's the thing. Hush, baby. Here's the thing. What I want you to understand is, in this country, we have become so combative to saying what's right and wrong because of what we believe that we don't take into account that somebody else's belief is not going to always be our beliefs. Well, we believe in the Bible. Well, we believe in Jesus Christ. Somebody else may not. And that's fine because mm-hmm. I don't have to answer for them. When I go on Judgment Day to meet God, he's not going to ask me to answer for John, Dick, and nobody else. He's going to say, what have you done? Absolutely. So I'm not accounting somebody else's sin to mine, mm-hmm. but I'm going to stand behind a woman all day long because I feel like that woman should have the right to choose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. May I ask a question? Uh, who's speaking? Uh, God is above everything. Okay, that's go, okay. Ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, when Jonah went to Nineveh, I don't think he was judging people. He was warning people and trying to give out of love because he cared. Because when you love somebody, you tell them the truth. And if you want them to be in heaven with you and you want them to see the father, then you're going to tell them the truth of the father. Right. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just speaking the truth. This is this is mm-hmm. not right. But I'm going to also say in the same breath. Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't think everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah was there to mess with the angels and harm the angels. And I don't think everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah was as evil as those that were surrounding Lot's house, right? But God took out everybody in that area because the people felt that comfortable to do such a thing because no one did speak up against the wrong they were committing. So at the end of the day, we don't, I'm not coming around here and judging nobody. But what I'm not going to do is in the midst of something, say something is right and think that it's okay. Because when that judgment comes and countries can fall and God can let it happen and the protection that he has around us can leave Mm -hmm. simply because no one was speaking truth about the wrong that is being committed in our country. And even though we talk about it from this aspect of, you know, um, what is it called? I don't want to be disrespectful, miss. Um, Real talk, like our our health, you know, our S health. I still think it's a spiritual thing, and I think that it's harming people. I feel like it is it's spiritual warfare, but I don't have, I, and I I think that y'all all have free will, and I feel like y'all all have the right to feel what you feel, but I'm not gonna try to make someone feel good about their wrong, and then when they have to answer to our father, and they actually was talking to someone who knew the truth, I have to answer just the same way. They have to answer for the sin they committed for not telling them that it was a sin that they committed. You kind of get what I'm saying? You're supposed to, it's not judging somebody, but like if your brother or sister in Christ is doing something wrong, you are supposed to pull them to the side and tell them like, this is not right. This is not how we're supposed to be moving. I totally disagree. If someone comes to you and asks you a question, then you, in my opinion, then you provide your opinion but you're not coming to me telling me nothing i have free will this is a panel your belief if you ask the question well i'm just letting you know everybody ain't you know nobody's stepping to me telling me nothing unless i ask you a question you're not forcing your I'm, opinion on people i'm it's just giving me. my opinion on a panel where a question was asked well go ahead on dear i'm just letting you know 
I got you. And I might have to go back there. And see, that's the pushback you get. Because that's your mindset. That's your ideals. You can't push them on other people. Other people have their own ideals. Yeah, 100%. I'm just giving my opinion on the panel right now. I'm not but, going but look, to let me let me go ahead and let me it. let me say this right quick. We all have the right to our opinion, but when it comes to uh like I said there and said, I come from a, a Christian belief background, okay? Like I say, I can go deep, deep with you as well. But and, and I, I truly believe that you are very aware when it comes to uh certain scriptures as in the Bible with Ezekiel. You I know you're familiar with some scriptures in Ezekiel, right? Uh God above everything. No, I don't know all the Bible. Well, still learning, let me but go ahead I'm and tell you the story. Like... Let me go ahead okay. and tell you the story in, with Ezekiel. Ezekiel was to go and warn the people of their rebellious ways, but it wasn't his job to sit there to be concerned about how they feel because some people, like I said, they have the right to agree to disagree. Back then, you know, we got stiff naked people, you know, but everybody is not going to agree that is not their belief your job is to tell it and, and once you tell it you know i'm just saying you know I, i'm not talking about just this panel right here i'm talking about any other panel or wherever you go out there in the street your job is to tell it and once you told told them the blood is off your hands that's it you know it's not for us yes, to get know. mad or anything you know like i said your job is to blow the trumpet and if they don't want to receive it that that that's something you know that's not your choice to get mad because it's not about Dotty Squad or anybody. It's only what you do for the Most High God. Okay. And so I do apologize for my anger. No, 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 like no. No, uh -uh. you have a right to your opinion. You have a right to your opinion. I don't believe in abortion, but like I say, each is on. You know, they have to be accountable. I believe that, you know, you're going to have to answer for it. And, and you know, like I said there and say, you know, but I don't force my belief on anyone. We all have a right to agree to disagree. Who got the mic? And you don't have to apologize. You're just no, passionate. no, no. That's your belief. Yeah, that's yeah, your belief. You're passionate about it, and you know you want to. Yeah, you never apologize. And, and, and you know, and you're passionate. You want to, you know, like a whole I'm run. Like you know, you you, you want to just make everybody aware, but not everyone believes. Yeah, you know, what, what you, you believe. believe or yes. what, like I'm, I'm, I moderate for Lady D. I don't believe in a lot of things that uh, that she believes in, but it doesn't mean that we can coexist, have a friendship. You know, it's just everybody was brought up differently. And but I think that's what makes us different and what makes yeah, us beautiful. Unique, yeah, is that we can have yeah. different opinions and we can all agree to disagree respectfully. Exactly. But here's the thing. Here's the thing when we so quick to say that we're christians and we take the bible so seriously but we only pick and choose certain parts yeah, of the bible part that, like. that we mm -hmm. take because here's the thing i don't know first of all the bible told us there's no perfect person so we're gonna all sin and if jesus died for our sins that we have yet to commit he knew he was gonna commit those sins so i'm not taking for granted what somebody else's life experience is i'm here to be a vessel to help people in their time of need and mm -hmm. if that means to be a voice or be an ear just to hear them that's what i'm gonna do i'm mm -hmm. not gonna judge and i'm not gonna tell them what they should do unless i've been asked you now know, they ask that's me the key. i that's will the insert key. my opinion right. That's but the key. i cannot put my beliefs or my religion or what I feel or what I'm thinking mm -hmm. onto them because they burden is already so deep. I wouldn't do that to nobody. Absolutely. And I wouldn't ask you to do that to nobody because you're then taking away from what you could do and make a big impact in somebody's life because sometimes people need to warm up to you to mm -hmm. ask you for help. And so if you so quick to put your judgment off on them, you will turn them away before you even have a Absolutely. chance to help. Absolutely. That's key. Absolutely. Go ahead, logical. I think, uh, in my opinion, I articulated what I was trying to say uh, to the young lady accurately. I believe if a person asks me a question, then I will give my opinion. But I'm not going to force my beliefs or my opinions on anyone. I thought I heard the young lady say that it's her job to speak to people if she see them doing something that's 
not good for them or against their body. And only if they ask. Only uh, if the door is open. If the door is not open. I, I said if it was a Christian, if it's a brother or sister in Christ, they say you're supposed mm -hmm. to correct your brother and sister in oh, your okay. belief when they're wrong. That's what they say. say the I don't go around actually just talking to people. This no, no. Oh, okay, okay. It's an invitation. And even when I deliver how I feel, it's not in a, a way that I'm trying to yes. leave a sour taste in their mouth. No. I just honestly... I'm relatively new in my walk with God. I've always known God, but I'm mm -hmm. actually having a relationship with God mm -hmm. and I'm seeking to live a life that makes him pleased. Mm -hmm. I'm living a life that where I want to become a new creation and I want the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to lead me. And I know I'm not going to be perfect ever because I do feel convictions. There's certain things I used to smoke weed. I used to sm uh, uh, smoke cigarettes. I used to watch, you know, the P word. I used mm -hmm. to do so much stuff. And now he's been taking that taste out of my mouth. Yeah. But yeah, now my thing crazy. is social media. I go uh -huh. on social media and I'm judging somebody. I got an mm -hmm. opinion on somebody's life. And I don't even like sitting in that type of element because I don't want to be sitting here judging someone. I don't mm -hmm. know behind the life that they live. But if I were in a community and let's say we were in a church together and I was doing something wrong, I would hope for my sisters in Christ and my brothers in Christ to correct me in my actions Absolutely. that is not of God. But if for someone to be of the world, they just live in the world. They, they're they going to continue mm -hmm. to live in the world. But as far as this setting right here, the reason why I'm giving my opinion was because it was asked. You were Absolutely. asking on the yeah. platform. I don't go around simply spewing out hate, which is not hate if you technically think about it, because mm -hmm. I want you to be in heaven with me. Mm -hmm. I want you to be in eternity where you're with our father and with his son who died for our sins. And I don't want to disrespect that sacrifice by willingly sinning. There's a difference between you make a sin and like I, me and you are having a discussion and I mm -hmm. slip up and I cuss or I turn around and I'm gossiping and God does not like gossiping either, but mm -hmm. I have a moment. But if mm -hmm. I deliberately go out there and I'm like, well, God, forgive me, but now let me do this. God, forgive me. Let me do that. Yeah, that's you're willfully. abusing that grace that God then gave you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm, I would never think that mm -hmm. we would never sin because we are human beings. We will never be perfect. That's why Jesus had to come down and do what he did because mm -hmm. there was going to be no man that was born from a woman and man that would be able to accomplish what Jesus accomplished. Mm -hmm. But we also need to seek to always be closer and be better and live a life that pleases him, you know? But if I did come off disrespectfully, I do apologize to y'all. No, you don't you didn't come off disrespectfully. Oh, no. Listen here. I'm glad that you told me this is your new walk of life. You didn't come off disrespectful. I didn't take it disrespectfully. But here's the thing. I just want you to understand. It's not... I don't want you to feel like you're... You have a right to have an opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, your opinion may differ from ours and stand on business, stand on what you believe, because what I hate most about people is when they believe something and they easily deter just because somebody says something. Yeah. So I always want you to stand on your business. I'm glad yeah. that you're in your new walk, but I want you to not think of it as judgment. And I want you mm -hmm. to think of it as the bigger picture is to help a soul. Yeah. So if you go in and say, I want to help souls, I want to deliver somebody. And if you take it like that, and instead of thinking about what they're doing, actually mm -hmm. listen to them. <laughs> People tell you when they talk what they need. Mm -hmm. If you listen, They'll tell you what they're saying. They'll talk to you and they'll open up. But sometimes people feel like, because we are in a judgmental world now, okay? You're judged by the way you look. You're judged mm -hmm. by how your body is. You're judged by how many people you've been with. You're judged by how many kids you have. You're judged if you're single or if you're married. Everything is a judgment. I don't want you mm -hmm. to take it as you're judging people, but just take into account that when you want to help to deliver souls and save a soul, mm -hmm. then you have to be able to listen. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to know when they need your help because everybody is not going to welcome your views. It's not going to be, okay, so now I'm delivered. I'm going to deliver the whole world. It's not going to work like that. When I got in my walk, that's what I said. I was like, oh, I'm going to deliver everybody. Oh, nobody's going to be gang banging no more. I'm going to stop all the drugs from going on. I hit roadblocks left and right. And I had to pray to God and I said, what am I doing wrong? And I promise you, I'm, I'm not lying to y'all. I heard somebody say, be patient, be still, listen. 
And that's what I started doing. Absolutely. And I heard the most awful stories, stories that broke my heart, broke me down. And I said, Lord, I want to help souls. What can I do? You know, let me tell you, I started Meals on Wheels in my community. Okay. Oh, wow. I started off by giving people stuff from my house. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's the greatest I ministry. I started right by there. doing that. And the church then saw me doing it and they reached in and helped me. And before mm -hmm. I knew it, I had grocery stores that was offering for us food to feed these people. Yeah. Then I, I was like, did. Mm -hmm. I saw people that didn't have clothes, but they wanted better jobs. I started getting clothes. Like, you have some gently used clothes that you don't want no more. Can you donate it? And I started letting people come pick out clothes to wear. But that's what I'm saying. You have to kind of listen to see what the change is that you want to be. You have to be a listener in order to know what you're finna fight for or what you're mm -hmm. finna advocate for. So mm -hmm. I don't want you to think of it as judgmental. I want you to stand on your opinions. I believe in everybody. That's the reason why my name is in my opinion. Because I'm not going <laughs> to be the tour from nobody, okay? I'm going to speak whatever I want to speak. If you don't like it, that's fine. But just don't disrespect me because I'm straight from the A, okay? <laughs> and, 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 and look, I want, I want to go ahead and say this right quick. Uh, especially, uh, got it above everything, since you said that, you know, you're still a babe in Christ. And uh, you just you just started. Uh, the the greatest gift, you know, is to just like uh, the sister said, you know, just go out there and, and help your fellow brothers, you know, and you know, go out there and, and do some charity work, you know. And when you know people, you know, they need a word, then you go and give a word to them. But the the greatest gift is to go out there and just help your fellow brothers. And I promise you, you know, that right there is going to be the best ministry. It's not going to, uh, you know, nobody is not going to question it because it's so much stuff that, you know, out there that, you know, the work, like they say, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. So, you know, go out there and help your fellow brothers. You know, if you got clothes in your closet that you know you're not wearing that's the best ministry go out there and help someone food you know if you know that you have extra money where you can go and buy food i started like that uh with my ministry you know i can get deep with it i started my evangelist like that uh i used to go to the stores and sam's wholesale buy boxes of groceries and you know, turkeys and Christmas stuff for kids. And before you know it, I had 18 wheelers driving up to my business, giving me all kinds of food and clothing where I was able to feed over 250 people in my community. So, you know, whatever you have, God is going to bless you if he know that you are faithful in what you do. So you don't have to go out there and say what well, thus says the Lord, you know, because like I said, you know, a lot of people, they have strayed away. But if you go out there and you help your fellow brothers and your sisters, I promise you, you're going to see that the harvest is plentiful. Yeah, I needed to hear this. I think I wanted to ask. I wanted, I wanted to, to say God, God, above uh, God above everything. I think I've been triggered because I've had people be very selective about what they want to be judgmental about or um, voice as a sin on someone else and then you follow them around and they commit all kinds of sins. You know? So oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I do get triggered when people, you know, uh wanna preach and uh point out one person's sin, but you 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 over here doing this. Amen. I agree with you. You know, so I apologize if I, you know, no, not at all. Hey, I knew you didn't come from a mean place at all. You weren't coming from a place and you were telling the truth because you had you had probably not heard everything I said and you were saying like you can't be going around doing that to people and you were right. You can't be going around and, and, and doing that to people because he said we're supposed to correct each other in the church and mm -hmm. I appreciate that because if I was doing that, that would have helped me 100% to realize I, I need to dial it back, you, you know? What I didn't hear you say is you speak to your brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters. I thought you meant that you would speak to anyone about this particular sin of abortion or whatever. You know, no, so, ma'am. Uh, that I didn't hear. You know, so. Now, I might have misspoke, but I know towards the end I had said if it was in like my brothers and sisters in Christ, 
if I if they were doing something wrong, I can correct them. But it is wrong for me to go around and just it's good to preach the word, I feel like, because you never know when somebody. But I, I'm not going to act like I'm going out there on a on a <laughs> soapbox doing any of that stuff because I don't. I ask God for that courage and I'm yeah. in my walk with faith. You know how you talked about how some people like to point out the sins of others. I, when I was smoking, you know what I'm saying? And I was doing those things and God convicted me of that and basically took the taste out of my mouth. I thought, Oh, I'm good now. You know, cause you think with these levels, we think with levels as human beings, like this is so since I don't do this, that means I'm, I'm 10 points better than the other person or, I don't sin as much as the others. So now, I'm, you know what I mean? But it was like the minute I stopped that, <laughs> it's like he opened my eyes to like, oh no, like you you got some more work to do. Like you need to be a little bit healthier. You need to um, stop judging people. You need to take the social media off of your phone because you're literally sitting there with idle time if you're not taking care of your child or your husband or your household and you're spending your time on something Mm -hmm. uh unproductive and that guilts me a lot you know mm -hmm. i pray a lot every night because i know there's things that's within me that is not of him and i just ask for him to help me get the strength to stop doing those things i know mm -hmm. i will never be perfect but i do believe that certain things are attainable certain things are we're able to do you know but i do mm -hmm. understand what you're saying like i that's one big thing of me that i am struggling with i feel like but it's see, dangerous. the thing about it, well, I can I tell, think, look, I let me, go ahead and say, let me say this right here. That's it. That's what I want to say. I really don't like the, uh, you say, because you, your light should shine, okay? Uh, I don't even talk about it on this platform, but I am an ordained minister, okay? M what you are doing is you focusing so much on it. Let go and let God. Your job is to just to go out there. And to do your best, you know, because like I said, everybody, you know, they have their own opinion. Go out there and and, and help someone and, 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 you know, you don't have to you don't have to sit there and even minister to them by your giving, by you helping someone. Go to the nursing home, go to the hospitals, you know, or go to the schools and volunteer. You know, I promise you, you're going to find peace. But if you go out there and you say this, you know, and the Bible says this, the Bible says that, you're going to turn them off. And I've been an ordained minister for a long, long time, okay? I don't even no longer, like I sit there and say, I don't even call myself a part of a church anymore i call myself a believer okay but like i said if you wants to stay on the right track just help somebody that's in need you know you don't even have to say the bible says this you, your action's gonna speak for itself go ahead uh in my opinion yes and also i want you to stop saying which what else you can change because listen here your change not gonna happen overnight it's not Absolutely. this is a race okay and this race is not given to the quick okay it, it's a long-term race and mm -hmm. all god wants you to do is be accountable that's, that's all he's asking you to do he's not asking you to be perfect he's not asking you to be in his image he's asking you, know, you, you got to be too much noise in the background go ahead mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants you to be accountable. And I'm telling you, don't second judge yourself, don't second guess, because sometimes we put that pressure on ourselves. Your mind yes. is not idle just because you're on social media. It's mm -hmm. not. You don't you have can do it. You can help a lot. Right. You, you have, have to have time to detach from the world. So that's not idle. That may be something you enjoy to do, and God wants you to do enjoyment. Okay. Right. He also wants you to do ministry, and that could be as as giving it could be as receiving it could be as ministering whatever that is you have to find out what works for you but don't take everything away from yourself because that's a quick way to slide into depression or to slide out of jesus christ's hands um god above everything uh private me your email and i'm gonna email you back okay yes ma'am private your email ask, yes um, god above everything like let's say you encounter before this live you encounter someone like me who doesn't believe in anything how would you have handled it someone like me that um, i am for you know for choice i don't believe in god like how would you handle someone like me 
Can you be the way I the way someone? I handle you, the way I handle you, large uh Starbucks. <laughs> I know. I'm just I'm just curious. I'm just curious how she would she would don't worry, whatever you say, I'm not gonna take it personally. It's just it is what it is. I'm just curious. Um, right now I'm not you know, I came she's on the just panel. a babe. Yeah, she's a babe in Christ. So uh, w just go ahead and email me and we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick a pin in this right here. Email me your email and I promise you I'll get back where you and I can set up a panel and whoever want to come up on, on it, we're going to set that topic just for that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back onto this nut, Donald Trump, okay? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So let's talk about what what did y'all get? Y'all got any more news about Donald Trump? If not, we could go ahead and close it down, okay? Oh, child. <laughs> Donald Trump be trolling. Donald Trump does not care what people say. No, he do not. Uh -uh. <laughs> he yeah. And I'm so, all about the economy, and he is the man for the economy. So you you think he's the man for the uh economy, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I bet you, in my opinion, got a different word for that. <laughs> I know, I know. Which I, I, I would love to hear what you got to say about that. In my opinion, um, I think none of them is ready to be the man for the job. Um, I think I, I'm gonna say something that's gonna be very probably very controversial for most people to take. I think the best person for the job we lit put through our fingers, and that was Hillary Clinton. Oh my oh god, my are you serious? God. I do because here's the thing. I think everything that Bill Clinton did, he uh -huh. pillow talked to Hillary. And I think Hillary was the one. And Donald Trump was so mad that he might lose to this woman. He did everything in his power to turn people away, to oh, keep putting that false see. information about this woman until it was too late. Yes, I do. Well, if you say Hillary was the best one, what about all the stuff that she did to those Haitians? All the donations and and she put the money in other businesses. It's you you name a perfect the president. You name a perfect president, and I'm 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 gonna show you so his. That is the excuse. Well, what's his name? Did it too, and he's Who? Haitian. What is it? Why Clef? Something like that. Yeah, mm, mm -hmm. but he wasn't a press. You know, he wasn't. But he you know, running for He's an artist. He went on. The, yeah, but he he's he's assumption. a rapper. I am not talking about yeah, the musicians. Still, I'm talking about still, these politicians. He still did it, you know. He did it mm -mm -mm. with the with the with you know where everybody was helping, and really he was helping his pocket. So uh, mm -hmm. a politician, what's a politician? They they all thieves. They all steal. They all. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what my thought says. Mm -hmm. This is what's my thought. My thought is stop waiting for these white saver hoes to sit there and and and, <laughs> and, and give you a, a exit. Okay. The, the best plan, this is the best plan, whether you guys want to want to take it or not, is to start raising up our own, raising up our own, training them, start getting chapels and, and, and teaching our kids, educating our own children to sit there and lead us. You see what I'm saying? And stop thinking that the same people that oppress and suppress you supposed to sit there and open up the floodgates. OK, stop it. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Uh Raise up, Bill raise Clinton. up. Our, we got enough smart, intelligent people. Raise up our own kids. Bill Clinton signed in the North American trade deal on his way out of office. Just sent millions of jobs out of America overseas. Hillary Clinton was going to come up with another trade deal that would send more jobs out of America, which uh, Donald Trump was trying to bring back. You, I remember when everything was made in America. I'm older than everybody in this chat. I remember when everything was made here. Okay, so what you think Donald Trump meant by make America great again? Just like <laughs> me, and, me and Donald Trump is real close in age. And he remembers. Oh, I'm just saying, tell me when America was great. When That's it was really great. Know. That's what when I you could, know. Uh, now, uh, when you could go from one job, high paying job, to another one in the same day. And when was that? Was when was that for us black people? Because 70s. it ain't never been that way in, in the, the South. In the sixties, in the seventies, in the eighties. I'm from. Well, America. it ain't never. Let me tell you something. It wasn't that way in the South. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. Because let me let me. I can tell you some horror stories from here in the South. Okay. 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 I I agree because I've never been. I have never been past Kentucky. 
I've been to Kentucky twice. I have never been no uh, no further in the south than Kentucky. So and where are you? A, uh, uh, logical, you in the west? No, I'm in the Midwest. Midwest, okay. I'm in steel country. Okay. Where the steel mills was popping. Oh, okay. And in the 70s, you could leave at 8 a.m., leave one steel mill job and go to the next and be working. By me. This is what Donald Trump is talking about. When everything was made in America, that's what he means by making Mar America great again. A lot of people weren't even born uh, during that era. Me and him are real close in age. I think he's about 70-something, right? I believe he's 78. Is. Okay. I ain't that far behind him. You know, he's 10 years older than me. That's what he's talking about. What, in my opinion, what did you think when he said? I think he, he was, was, uh, he was race, trying to make it racial. all white again. Yeah, that's, that's, what what my son, that's, what my that's what my son said. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When he came down here to Alabama, you know oh. what he was talking about? What, babe? Yes, let's 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 do a co-ed prison and have the farms on them. Put them in the farms. You know who are in our Alabama prisons? Who? Eighty-six percent of our Alabama prisons are consumed by blacks. Oh yeah, that's all over the country. That's all over the country. That's yeah. all over the country. But I'm just saying, why do you need to make us a plantation for your farmlands? <laughs> why do we need to have the prisoners working as a slave? That might have been a bad idea. You know, I'm not gonna say all of his ideas are great. And what you said. He wanted to make America all white again. It's the same thing my son said. Mm -hmm. My son will be because I sat here and I had to, absolutely I had to hear stories of my daddy mm -hmm. being stopped as a kid, as a teenager, mm -hmm. and seeing his sister and his mama being filled up by the cops. Oh, wow. And he couldn't do nothing and being called a nigga. Okay. And that was in the 60s. Watch our words, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh -oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got tricked for a minute, but I'm just saying that's the reason why I don't have the same experiences as you. Okay. okay, okay it's okay. just like I can go in the store right now and I live in a predominantly white neighborhood. I can go in the store and no matter what designer I have on, no matter how much money I got in my bank account, uh -huh. they're still going to look at me okay. like I'm going to steal something out of their store. Okay. So they still going to they still going to watch me go down out to aisle. And if I get on my kids in the store, oh, it's even rougher. Are you finna abuse those kids? That's the, oh. This is what they say to you. Are you speaking about white people? Yes. Who else? Ain't no black person gonna walk up to me and say it. Right. Now, see, here's the thing. Where I live, when I go shopping, all I see is people that look like me. Well, see, in this area, if you stay in a black neighborhood, you're gonna be patrolled to drugs on every corner, street walkers walking, shootouts every night where the police start coming. I, I can't live life like this. I'm too old to live like this. I'm too blessed to live like this. And no, I'm not saying I'm better than nobody else, but I'm just saying for my life and for my careers, I need to be somewhere where I feel safe. I don't go out in the streets. I don't hang out in the streets. I don't live that street life. Those are the metropolitan cities where you know you have these shootings all day and all black cities are not like I live in all black city and it's you know it's not like that you know there are some uh fights and some shootings but it's not all day every day like you would see in chicago or you would see in new york it's not like that in all black cities but anyway i think you should look up the map because alabama is number four okay. in crime rate yeah so you, you exactly what you said is what my son said the reason why he wanted to make America great again, you know, and I see it totally different. You know, I, well, I, I'm I, saying you can't make America something it's never been. So for you, it's been great, but for a lot of people in the South, it's never been great. Okay. And oh, we well, can't uh, see we can't see greatness because when you was in office, mm -hmm. you had a whole nation to rise up and do an insurrection on our capital. Which even furthermore let me know I did not want him in office no so, more. So you're saying that um I know most people were uh Republicans, but you're saying that was his intention for them to go there 
And um, I feel like that was his intention. He didn't show didn't call him off. He didn't give, he didn't give, and let me tell you something. I've never mm -hmm. seen a vice president that ran up under this president mm -hmm. not not say, hey, don't vote for him. I, I mm -hmm. won't condone him. That man said he won't condone him because you sat there and let me and my family be at risk while you was at the White House okay. Now, you know, in, in my opinion, why I don't hold that against him, what they did at the Capitol, because nobody's holding uh black lives matter responsible for, for all the destruction they did in so many cities oh no i held them i held them accountable for stealing the I'm, money i'm speaking of the politicians maxine waters which uh democratic politician held them is she is, is, is she running for president who uh, well, well here's the thing i'm but holding him here's the thing okay i feel like if we're gonna hold somebody accountable let's hold the person that's in the office that's trying to run for the office accountable i can't go sit here and say mm -hmm. well sally down the street one held accountable but sally down the street ain't trying to run for the office of president okay i can't hold her accountable because she ain't trying to run but this mm -hmm. devil here I done seen you in office, okay, and I saw what you do to stay in office, okay. The reason why he's on trial is because he done frauded everybody in every state. The reason he has several trials, I've never seen somebody be convicted or, or, or on trial for so many different convictions. Yeah, that was so the president. and he has not been convicted of not one because he had been fighting these trials and trying to post them back and i'm so glad they said no the because books stopped they here. are so ridiculous this is why they cannot they know they cannot convict him on none of these crimes that's not the, the main idea so well, logical logical you don't think that he's going to be convicted this no, time no no ma why not okay what the one that they got they're talking about now is the stormy daniels payoff right well he gave one hundred thirty thousand dollars for hush money right the porn star oh i can't say porn the peace star that's what he's they're taking him to court for right now he paid her through his uh liaison um i can't think of his name right now he gave her one hundred thirty thousand dollars to to shut up about him having an affair with her when his son was born when his wife he wasn't even a politician when that happened he was a businessman. His son was, uh, his wife was, uh, you know, pregnant and in labor. And this is when he's supposed to have this deal with this peace star. That's between him and his wife. There's no way they're going to convict him on having an affair with a porn star. Do you, how many women did John F. Kennedy bang? How many, come on. They will never lock him up for giving a, a, a woman one hundred thirty thousand dollars. Who thinks so? I want him to be locked up for everything? Okay, I want him to lock. I want him to be locked up for the point. I want him locked up for the peace star. I want him locked up for the uh, for the uh, election fraud. I want him locked up for defrauding the whole state of New York. Okay, because here's the thing. Let me tell you something. New York is oh, not in a city. No, because see, here's the thing. I, I think. I think sometimes we take how we're living and we take it for granted that uh -huh. other people don't live that same life. Uh -huh. You keep saying your son told you that he in California. I'm telling you this, I'm from the South, okay? I think you need to take in consideration that nobody else is living. I, I'm glad that you have that, that, that life. You know what I'm saying? I, I would never wish this kind of life on no, nobody. No, no, I, uh, I'm, no, I'm glad I, you're living a great life and you felt like America was great where well, you got to do it. But let me tell you something. Here in Alabama, you know what our minimum wage is? 725. Okay. You know how long it's been 725? Mm -hmm. For about 12 years. Okay, you said New York. What crime did he commit in New York? He defrauded all of New York. All them businesses like to see yeah, he defrauded the banks and stuff on. He didn't have the money he said he had when he took out all those loans. He defrauded the whole state of yeah. New York. Yes. 350 million. That was the Deutsche Bank. No, that was in New York. Look it up. That was in New York. They the was bank. trying to shut down and lock up his businesses. <laughs> I forgot the district attorney down there that's trying to get him. That was in New York. Right. You're talking about AG 
Letitia James. The bank that he borrowed that money from, and they claim he defrauded his, his loan documents, it was the Deutsche Bank. He borrowed millions from that bank and paid every penny back with interest. He didn't pay those workers that was working on his dang bank. That's what I'm saying. In, in my opinion, they prosecuted him for inflating his uh, wealth stating he was so much of a billionaire back then and how that's how he got the loan they loaned him the money he paid every dime of that loan back with interest every dime to that bank that bank didn't even prosecute him it was the uh, attorney general of new york that prosecuted him he is not going to jail for that does it look like he's going to jail for that to you in my opinion I pray, every, to God every, I pray to God every day that that man gets a life yeah, sentence. Sorry, dear. <laughs> I pray to God every I'm day. Sorry, I'm okay, so I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I'm glad you, I'm telling you, I'm glad you live where you live. Okay, uh -huh, I'm telling you, telling you I'm heartbroken to hear that you, that, that you feel like he's the best man for the job. I, I feel like I feel like I feel like you're failing your brothers and sisters that's in other states uh -huh, that are. Uh -huh. I'm only speaking for me. Well, see, that's what that, that's another thing. I would never listen. Here, here's the thing: when I say when I say what I say, I'm not just speaking for me. I'm speaking for my ancestors. I'm speaking for my brothers and sisters down the street. I'm speaking for everybody because I want everybody to actually win. I want it to be a fair ground for everybody. I don't want them to look at the color of my skin. Let me tell you something: the one thing I notice is if I talk to somebody on the phone. Uh -huh. Oh, they're willing to do business with you then. But uh -huh. when I show up as this brown skinned sister here, then their whole attitude change. Of course. And of that's course. the part that I want better again. But it's never been better. I had to think about it. It's never been better. It's not never. This is the better time. And if this is the better time, what the heck is you trying to make better again? Well, let me ask you this in my opinion. Do you think these eight million immigrants would have came in this country if uh, he was president? I think he was working on the wall for uh, four years and we didn't get it half. Actually, it's more people coming in thanks to him and his wall. Okay, I think you spent our money on making a wall that didn't help them none because and they still was coming not in able and to finish the wall. Here's the thing because they don't put so much money. Let me tell you something. I'm not finna let you spend my the government money that I invested into this government on a wall that you said was gonna be this amount. Then you use that amount and you want to come to us and say, I need some more money because we ain't made the wall yet. Well, fool, you told us one amount. Now you come in and you want some more millions? No, I don't trust that man no farther than I throw him. If he couldn't work out his own businesses, if he couldn't pay his own people, how am I expecting him to take care of me and my country with my little money? Okay, no, I don't want that man in office. I'm telling you, I am praying every day. I promise you, that is one prayer I pray every day. I pray that, that man is locked up for life and he does not get in. Oh, well, I have who, a who, uh, who, uh, who, wait, let me say this right quick. Who are you praying to get in the seat then? I'm praying somebody else independent comes up that's a better choice because I'm. What about I feel like we what about doomed what about I feel Biden? like we boomed if we. I, I, you know what? Here's the thing. If I had to pick between those two, I would pick Biden over him. Oh, what really about would. all the money that he's funding with the wars and stuff? You know what? Let me tell you something. I, I say one. You got to do the lesser of the devils, okay? And lesser of the devils is Sleepy Joe. So I'll take Sleepy Joe any day if Trump is the other person. Even though he's spending trillions of dollars in a war, right? That has nothing to Even, do with us. Yes, I will take okay. Trump. I mean, I would take Biden. Well, Trump ain't gonna do nothing but but make it an old racist war. We gonna be in, you know, Russia gonna be over us in a while. Okay, if he get in there, Russia gonna be have business with our business. We gonna be in a whole lot war. I don't know what y'all seeing, but I'm telling y'all right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Logical. Hold on one second. Go ahead, God above everything, and then logical. You can go back. Go ahead. I feel like we're in a messed up situation in general. I feel like from um um from the the immigration that's coming into 
uh, the social medias that they use that um, I feel is the psychological warfare to um, the the people that's in government right now. Both sides are not good for neither Ooh, one of us. They don't care about us. I think that we're just, I think we're sick. I think we're sitting ducks. I don't think that um, mm-hmm. any one of them are going to be beneficial for us. And I think we're just at the end of the road, honestly, as a country. I would hope not. You know, I have a child. We all have children. We have family members that have kids. You know, we want the best for this situation. But the way the the cards are looking, it doesn't matter who would be in that seat. I don't think any of them are in the position to even be in the seat at all. I feel yeah. like it, it's not going to be beneficial for us as a collective white, black, Hispanic, um, Christian, non-believers. I, I, I just um, I don't think that neither one of them i i'm just i i feel like we're in a bad situation it's like you know how they say you're like in a rock in a hard place mm. and you know how y'all say less of two evils it's like how evil how do you determine between those two one is not even in his right mind the other one is out of his mind by choice you know what i'm saying and and both don't care about the betterment of the people and they would sell us up up a river for for anything even those that are in the government as well it's not just president it's congress and legislative it's just it's corrupt inside and out Amen. it's just corrupt and we're just we really honestly are just sitting ducks waiting for i i think it's the end for this you know but Mm -hmm. i'm not trying to be like what they call it um um rude like the um dark or depressing or anything like that but that's how i really feel about both of them they Mm -hmm. even biden was talking about like you're not black if you don't vote for me what are you talking about you're racist too i I talk about that all. like you're racist too bro like you don't even like us like you don't even care for us and even like i feel like it's a it's a choice between burger king and mcdonald's you're getting the same thing it's just packaged differently they both don't care about us I feel like people need to start really like getting closer in their communities and coming up with a plan where they have localized yep. leadership because it's yep. going to get to a point where that's going to be the important factor. But but the way I think the way not, uh, not to cut you off, God above, I think the uh, the politicians, even the black politicians today, have sold out a bunch of Uncle Toms. That's why I think that the only way that we're gonna be able to come out of this, we got to sit there and raise them up from a babe, raise them up and and. and get black schools, you know, and, and teaching our kids because long as they sit there, got these European standards and sitting at the table, eating these crumbs here and there, trust me, they going to sell us out, you know? So in order to come out of this, we got to sit there and start raising up our own people. Go ahead. You can continue. I agree with you. I feel like we're in a matrix and even yes. beyond that, I feel like I, I feel so sad for us as a people because we do have to, like, I always said this since I was younger. I feel as if we are in a video game. And once mm-hmm. we get past certain levels, it seems like there's another level we have to defeat. Yeah. Once we realize race was a construct that was made by those that are above us to make mm-hmm. us divide so they could conquer us easily. Absolutely. Then we'll get somewhere. But as a whole, like, bro, like, that infrastructure is crazy, Miss D. Like, it, it really is, like... It, we could talk about it, and I feel like if we were proactive about it, it's like how um, the other lady said, the genie's out the bottle. I don't even know how we can even fix it in certain mm-hmm. situations. Well, it can like, be fixed. I believe that too, yes, but I'm just like, where do you even start? It start you know with I mean? us. It start with us. It start with first we got to sit there and shake off of these grave clothes and come out of her. It start with us to sit there and, and it's not about Dottie Squatty or anybody. It, and like I said, the thing about reason was keeping us apart is religion. If we sit there, like I said, if we sit there and, and, and start coming together, you know, because they're going to take care of their own people. When we come together, Trust me, we can put them demons on the run. But long as we fight no religion is this is that, that is that, that's what they throw in our way to keep us divided. But if we come together on one accord, I promise you, we will be a force to be reckoned with. I agree with you. I agree. We do need to unify, you know. I think we need to see value in ourselves as well, because I feel like, like how you said too, like, um, 
know that we are important, know the value of our life and our existence and that we're here for a purpose, um, love and uplift one another. Cause I think that's a big component too. Like how Miss, uh, in my opinion, was talking about how she's dealt with people that have had so many different traumas. You know, she's there to give them a love that they probably it's never more- had in their whole life, you know? And, um, it's, it's, but that is, I, I, I think it is doable, like you said, but it's it's like so much. It's like when you think about it from all the aspects, it's like where do you even? Is we're in a bad situation as far as government, though, y'all. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's something that we can fix with them because I think it's corrupt, like you said already. I think it's already set up. I think it's like NASCAR; they're all sponsored mm-hmm. by different uh, companies to pass different laws. That's not even beneficial for the people that put them in the seat in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's like it's literally would have to be grassroots operation. It would Absolutely. Have to be people working Absolutely. With each other. We look, we got 15 more minutes, okay? But th- let me tell you, it's all about power. And we got the power because I promise you, I talk about it all the time. They would never exist without us. If we stay home, don't you know if just Africans, Americans, brown, if we stay home just for one week, not even a week, a day, I promise you the whole economy will collapse if we stay home because it's all about power. These people are not fighting about nothing but power. Well, It's all about power. Here's the thing. This is what I believe. We don't know in a few short months in this next election. If Biden gets in, we're going to be paying 5 $6 for a loaf of bread. We would be paying more for gas, six, seven dollars a gallon. If Trump gets in, we will start pumping oil again in Alaska and our gas prices will go down, which means everything else, because everything is transported by semi trucks, they have to buy gas. And therefore, the prices of food and any other th- something that you buy is triple what you paid for three, four years ago. And don't you know all that, what you just said, uh, logical, all that is Bible prophecies. Uh, That's in the book of Revelation as Bible prophecy. Even a loaf of bread is going, it's going to take a whole day wages. Like I say, nothing new under the sun. But now we know all this, but we don't prepare for none of this. So like I say, we could talk until we blew in the face. We've been talking for almost three hours, but no one ever came with a solution. What is the solution to stop this? My solution is, is that stop pouring into that system. Wow. She's in the backstage, she said. Uh, In my opinion. Yeah. Well, you know, in my opinion, it's a wonderful person. I think she's a, an asset to her community. But baby, when we talking about this, do you know how many homeless people have uh, become homeless since Biden's in office? How we were you know how many homeless people it was before he before he look, got look, 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 hold on hold on hold on we got 50 more minutes because see i just had surgery okay i can't do all that so what <laughs> oh, we're gonna god do, bless you yes yes, you, yes you, everything gonna be okay i know you're gonna be yes okay. so well, this is well hold on hold on one second what we're gonna do each one go ahead and find a solution we speak in solution now i can open up a panel another day for this right here we can do it another day i like this you see what i'm saying because this is what we need you know we we, we can't keep brushing this under the rug so look we got a few more minutes we'll start with you uh in my opinion okay and then uh logical then whomever want to fill in and then we're gonna go ahead and close it out go ahead uh mm-hmm. in my opinion only solution okay I think the solution is we need to do, we got to get these people out of Congress and Senate that have been sitting there for years that is trying to hold us back. That instead of making a, a, a real solution and solving our crisis, they pacifying it to get some money into their pockets. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Go ahead, Lodge. Oh, I think the solution is um, wait till the election. See who gets in office, see what happens. I think everybody will be convinced. I think we'll be talking, we'll have a conversation and it'll it'll be totally different depending on who's in office. On the economy, the state of the economy, the state of 
I'll be right, right now. Um, I think I paid $3 and 89 cents a gallon for gas yesterday. I want it back down to two dollars or lower 210 and then everything else goes down that's the solution go ahead lodge not logical starbucks and then god above everything starbucks starbucks is on or she's out starbucks just um. be dropping and don't even put a seat belt on uh, go ahead, God above. <laughs> Starbucks got to be putting her seatbelt on. She be dropping it. We don't know if she's in or out. Go ahead, God above. Um, I feel like that it's uh like you say that we need to be good stewards of what God is blessing with us right now, uh, to prepare for what is to come. I feel like our country's in the decline, and I don't think there's any government that can save us. I think that we need to start rationing our food. We need to start saving up money. I think we need to start uh, learning how to protect ourselves and we need to know about our neighbors, learn how to get closer with them and build a community within our communities. You know what I mean? Um, that's my solution because I, I don't, I don't think there's any, it's too corrupt. Like our government's too corrupt. Absolutely. And this, just like I said, you know, and, and I'm going to continue with this. My solution is that we have to start teaching our own, especially with, these young athletes, these entertainers making millions and billion dollars, getting these contracts. So in a minute they get those contracts, they go to Becky and Karen, you know, learn to stay in your own community because when you take that money and you give it to Becky and Karen, something happened, God forbid, like a Kobe Bryant and a Vanessa, that money is not going to pour back into your community. I'm all about black. Okay. So like I said, learn to sit there and, and, and love yourself and stop hating on each other. And also when it comes to, uh, as I, I'm a, a a cosmetologist, you know, we spend billions of dollars, not even billions. Now I found out $1.2 trillion a year just on hair weave, on, on, on hair products. Don't you know all that money could be in our community? We don't have no schools. We don't have no banks. We don't have no libraries. We send in kids from school to the prison. Like I said, you know, when are we going to wake up and stop allowing these people to rock us to sleep, leave these people stuff alone? And I promise you, when we start pouring in our community, no devil in hell can prevail, okay? So on that note, we're going to go ahead and close it out. I love this live. This was, like I say, is much needed. And this is how we have to talk, you know, even though we talk about the reality shows, but the reality shows, like I said, you know, we can take pieces out of all this stuff right here, but at the bottom line is that most of this stuff, they keeping us distracted because they don't want us to know what's really going on out there, okay? So uh, I'm done, guys. Anybody got one last word or are they all done? Yeah. I'm glad that I met y'all. Let me tell you Thank something. you. Thank you very much. Oh, I like it. It's been very refreshing. Let me tell you. I found out about you uh, on Misbehaving chat last okay. night. Okay, <laughs> Misbehaving. Yes. Uh, that's so my girl. I am excited. I love, I, let me tell you something. I love my girl Logical, okay? She was telling me, she said, you got to go over there to Lady D. And I came over here and I subscribed automatically. And when this live yeah. popped up, I popped on in. I said, well, let me see what Lady D got for me. Yeah, so I am pleasantly surprised. Let me tell you something. I love strong black women that stand on business, and I think you are definitely one of those people. So Absolutely. I am so glad to be I a subscriber. We are all, all strong black women in this chat. Thank you very, very well, much. Well, the thing is, I can't take four more years of Biden's economics. <laughs> Well, look, you email me and you come up with sub a topic and I promise you I can post it. And I'm sure that in my opinion, we'll be on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I she will be on. Right. Well. Okay, guys. Uh, uh, I enjoyed every bit of it. Country yeah. girl, she said, this has been a great, awesome live. Everyone enjoy the rest of your Friday. Be safe and God bless you all. So guys, on that note, you all be blessed here. Thank you. Thank Everybody. you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Logical in my opinion. Uh, God above all. Uh, thank you for coming in. And also my girl, Starbucks lover, my girl, country girl, Queenie. Well, look, we're going to need you up here again. Girl, like I sit there and say, you know, it is what it is. We all have a right to our opinion, right, Logical? Absolutely. We all yes. have one. <laughs> so, so tomorrow, uh, you with your grandbabies, right? 
Because yeah, I want to talk about. Uh, I mean, they're on oh, the highway now. So okay. I got a couple of hours to get. Well, everything is ready. So I mean, yeah. Well, well, well if you could sneak and get in the streets. Yes. <laughs> Well, if you could sneak in or peep in, I'm going to talk about all the stuff that is yeah. going on with mm -hmm. Melody feeling like she needs a security. And I don't think it's for Martell because Martell is not stuck now, not okay? I think <laughs> she's afraid of the millimeters. Okay? Right. Oh, I got all of that research done for... Uh, I know you did. I got, I know I got you did. done yesterday because, you know, I hope uh, I can be free at some point tomorrow. I don't know. You know? Okay, but that's why I pushed it back Sunday because I sat there and say, you know, look, that's your show up Sunday. You yeah. know, you, you are you a research, you got a master's in this, and and I'm just gonna let you go. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think it's gonna be nice. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gonna enjoy it. Yeah, and yes. my uh, company should be gone. Uh, I won't say I hope, but they should oh, be gone. Okay, by, uh, Sunday afternoon, and I should be free for yes. Sunday evening at five. That's the plan. And I hate when someone diminish someone, you know, accomplishment. Now we got all these little new YouTubers just coming out of the mm -hmm. woodwork and they trying to say they never heard of a Carlos King before Love yeah. and Marriage in Huntsville. So where were they? Because Carlos King been out since Real Housewives of Atlanta. He's been in the business for 20 years. You yes. see, I got I got everything. You know? Okay, 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 yeah. okay. So what you think about going on with Andy Cohan? You know, some people say that he's being misplaced, and then some of the uh, uh, content creators say that he's not being uh, misplaced. So I don't know. You know, I guess mm -hmm. we gotta wait and see. Yeah. Uh, if Bravo is gonna let him go, how much trouble is he really in? Mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the, uh, you know, what they were saying about him. Yes. I don't think we could say the words over here. Mm -hmm. So I wonder why those two came out and now they want to take action but when nini was talking about all the stuff mm -hmm. that he did they didn't do not one doggone thing yeah and nini accused him of uh doing the same things absolutely right and um these two women which are white women uh, mm -hmm. are saying it and it's it's, it's it's gaining a little traction do i think andy cohen is going to be fired no no I really and don't. then if he get fired, they say they're going to give him some kind of savage uh, package. He's going to go away just like Don Lemon's a millionaire. I don't think Andy Cohen. Because they're going to make sure that they give him a cute little package. Hmm. They yeah. gave Nene Leakes. Nene Leakes the one put the engine to that dying network. Right, 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 right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, uh, Andy Cohen is part of that community of the elite, the wealthy and the elite. So I don't okay. think he'll be losing his job, but I could be wrong. I think he will, like but they're going to make sure they give him a nice little package, a little going away package. Yeah. I don't know, because who gonna, who's going to replace Andy? Uh, I hope someone that is more knowledgeable, especially when it comomes to these... Uh, how, how Kim was Kim Zosiak talking about these fight these African women, you know? <laughs> they were talking about Leah McSque McSqueenie. Uh, I cannot is she is she's black or white? White. She's supposed to be replacing him. I, oh, okay. I don't see that working, but we'll see. No, I think I it should be someone on. that is very knowledgeable. I would love to sit there and see um what's her name? Uh the one that came before, uh gosh, I can't think what her name came is. Came before Carlos? No, she used to do some little uh talk ho horse. Uh let me see. I can't think what her name is. I'm uh, not Claudia Joy, definitely not Claudia Joy. Is another one they used to come, she used to come on. Uh you talking about Egypt. Egypt. I don't Shabbat. know. I know it was one of them. I think she would be a good fit to yeah, take uh Andy Cohan place. She had her and her husband have a show right now. Okay. Uh, Chris uh Chris Fletcher is a part of, you know, they're all builders and realtors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, I think you're talking about Egypt, Sherrod. She yeah, would be I, great at that. Mm -hmm. She already has a show. Her and her husband have a show. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's time for Andy. It's time for him to go. You think and so? especially, oh yeah, I, I do not mm -hmm. like him. Oh, I do not like him. <laughs> I think he, I think he's racist. I definitely think Andy Cohen is racist. Uh, you know what? I believe, I believe all white people are racist. <laughs> you believe? all oh, I ain't gonna go that far because and, I, got, I had some good ones that really helped me when I was going through with my business. Oh yeah, there's a few good ones, you know. And mm -hmm. I believe ninety-eight percent of black people are racist. Yeah, yeah. 
I, well, I don't think that a black person, and, and, and I might be wrong when it comes to races, I, I think that we could be bigot. Oh, how you say that? Um, we can be um, not racist, but um, we can be bigots. I think we can be bigots. Um, no, we because we don't have we don't have the power. I don't think that we have the power mm -hmm. to be racist. We don't have no government, no military, you know, to back mm -hmm. us up. And we don't love. I don't think we don't hmm? really like. One. I don't think black people really like or love white people. You don't think so? No. Won't tell you how I look at it when it comes. I think uh, when it comes to uh, black, which that's another story. I think that the I think that when we talk about you know white, I think it's our lower self. They only can do what we allow them to do. Yeah. I think if we start sitting there and, and, and start knowing who we are, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that they can sit there and get to us. Then we will realize that they, our lower self, you know, we are God and goddesses. Mm -hmm. And we, it's like being on a football field of all black people, but you only got three white powerful people that's running the whole show. That's how we are. We are, we in numbers, but we got our lower self, a very small number running the show. That's how I look at it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, girl. All right, girl. I'm finna go. We got so much to talk about. See guys, yes, so much do. to talk about. <laughs> all right, girl. Be blessed right. here. You too, dear. Bye-bye. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. This right here was a very good live, very intense, very passion. I enjoyed every bit of it. I just say, look, let them have at it. So, guys, thank you, the ones that's in the bushes. Make sure you go ahead and hit like, comment, and share these videos for more unapologetic content. Like I said, in here, it's grown, folks. I try to give each and everyone a voice, you know, like I say, we have a right to agree to disagree. We talk about everything. We just don't talk about reality shows. We talk about all the stuff that is going on out there. So on that note, guys, you all be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Blessed Friday. Thank you, Starbucks. Thank you, Queenie. Thank you, in my opinion. Thank you guys for coming in. You all be blessed.